Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the United States, it is time, or across the globe rather, because this is the world of Guilty Gears Drive here at Level Up Expo 2024. I'm Zero alongside Jade Suit for the spectacular top eight that is going to be so interesting because we're having yeah. quite a few names in this top eight on the winner's side, which might surprise you. Yeah. We're going to be hanging out. We got Guilty Gear Strive top eight. And in that winner's side, we have Idom versus Sun Ace Keem. The other side is going to be Chris G versus Baru. And then bringing in the loser side is going to be Sparrow, Sparrow rather, versus Bran and McBat versus Avarice Aeon. So I'm excited yeah, to see it. Yeah. Avarice we saw yesterday yes. for that Grand Blue Top 8 over, uh, you know, rocking the Charlotta as well. Of course, you know, you guys need no introduction for Idom as well. Sun Ace Keen too, bringing up the Nago. So I'm excited to see the action play out live. Yeah, Chris G, you know, pulling up on this Guilty Gear Strive, of course, yeah. multi-game competitor always. Yes. Uh, playing a few brackets out here, including the uh, Grand Blue bracket, right? So yep. Really putting on a show. I'm looking forward to seeing Chris because I don't think I've seen Chris play Guilty Gear. Have Not you? in a while. Okay, no, okay, I feel okay. like I haven't seen it since season one. So I'm excited right, to see it. Yeah. You know, he took the championship home for Grand Blue yesterday, and he right. was like, "No, no, no, it's not enough. Let me pull up for some Guilty Gear Drive." Yeah, they added that additional pop bonus there to make it a two thousand yeah. dollar pop bonus for Guilty Gear Drive this weekend here at Level Up Expo. So lots of folks are uh, entered, primed, and ready yes. for this competition here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And a spectacular time to be because, you know, it's the final day of Level Up Expo. A little it bit is. of a shorter day, unfortunately. So make sure you get in on the Expo floor if you're rushing on over, mm -hmm. you know, through your Uber, travel safely. Or yes. if you're just watching the VOD, of course, like this is one of the last days to check out the venue, check out the uh, various uh, booths that they have available. We got an invite to go check out VR. We got to go yeah. do VR, we were told. We got to stop on so, by. Yeah, we have to do that. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it's been a great weekend. Looking forward to, you know, I, I, I mean, honestly, want to go get a couple more things from these booths. Out yeah, there, right? right. It'd be cool to stop on by. There's a lot of interesting exhibitions they got going yeah. on there, right? Of course, there's the classic artist alley. I stopped by yesterday, did my preliminary crawl, uh, and I think okay. after this, I'm probably going to stop on by and you know make some finalized purchases. And as I was walking by, I just see this like open wrestling ring. Yeah. And I don't know if there's like planned exhibitions going on or if you can just oh. like volunteer yourself to pull up. I don't know, but they seemed real excited mm. over there, so I'm not going to lie. Oh, so as I've been hyping up leading up to this, they yeah. did have a wrestling show. Yes. And yesterday was that wrestling show. Oh, okay. Friday, okay. Yeah. they allowed people to go into the ring. You could take a few bumps. You could, you know, uh, run on the ropes. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I think that's what it's called. Bumps yeah. is like when you do the fall to yeah, the mat, yeah. whatever. So that was, I don't you know, I'm not watching wrestling all the time, but yeah. also it's really cool to have that ring experience to bring back that show, yeah, right. which they ended up going on. So that was really cool. Um, you know, they still got the cars over there, the Senpai Squad. It's a good time over yeah, there. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I heard someone screaming for one of the voice actor meet and greets. Like, the, I mean, it's popular. We've got some stars out here. Yeah, like, Expo, yeah, sure, yeah. I, I think they go hard for, like, the has -been Hotel and the yeah. uh, Hell of a Boss crew. Like, Makes they sense. were popping off. And Christopher Judge is here, you know, so you got your Kratos and Atreus. I apologize to Atreus. I, I can't remember your name. <laughs> uh, but both of them being here is awesome. So yeah. that's a great opportunity. Of course, uh, Christopher Soba, you know, voice of Vegeta out yes. here, right? So that's awesome. Uh, lots of great names. And... Speaking of Idom, a great name in Street Fighter, Marvel, and even Guilty Gear Strive. Mm -hmm. Up against Sunday's Keem, though, on the Nagoryuki. It'll be Testament Nagoryuki matchup here. Wait, Idom is staff now? <laughs> what, he swapped out his badge? Now he's got the staff Where'd badge. You, so he who'd can pull you? Up. No, put, take that set off. Who, who'd you steal that staff badge from? He, he said, don't worry about he, it, bro. I have to get into the secret in. entrance. Okay, all right, all right. I have to make sure. In time here for the street match, headed up to the stand. So, Idom versus Sunday Scheme, right? This is probably going to be Testament versus Nagori Yuki. Yes. So, would imagine this is, uh, you know, I think Nago has a, a few good tools to be able to contest oh, at yeah. the mid range, especially when you have that empty blood gauge. But once you're up against the wall, you know, level two, Testament's able to, you know, run some of those looping frost flames. I would imagine it's a little bit difficult to try and get out. Yeah, it's for Testament, no doubt, right? Because yeah. you don't have those Nagori reversal Yuki. opportunities, you know, uh, unless you got your meter available to you. Nagori Yuki can be so explosive, and I think that's kind of going to be the the true test in this matchup in particular is to yeah. see how quickly are you going to close the gap against Testament to not allow them to really get set up. You know, mm -hmm. uh, no Arbiter sign at full screen. Like, that's going to be something to look out for. I think we're going to see a lot of, like, just quick interrupts playing yeah. the mid-ground game with the uh, Grave Reaper to kind of interrupt Dual on the ground one. so you can remove Beyblade off the field. Like, exactly. that should be, like, an option to kind of cover throughout this matchup. But, again, it is the Goryuki. I mean, look at this. Like, we got to make sure Beyblade's check, working. Check, but, yeah. yeah, like, 
that's just a, a fact of the matter is, Beyblade comes through, and that's going to be a problem for Tessie. You just saw it live right here. Yeah. All right. Looks like the button should be all good. Make sure Super Jump out of the uh, Blood Pop works as well. Let's head into it. Yes, about to get the fist bump in, back into the character select. Buttons are checked, warmed up, and ready to go. And here we go, Guilty Gear Strive, top eight at Level Up Expo. Let's hear it out there, folks. I know it's early in the afternoon, but I want to hear it. There we go, Idom versus Sun Ace Team. Our first match over here at Guilty Gear Strive, top eight in the winner's side. Yes. There's going to be real serious mode out here. So, yeah, like I said, Grave Reaper is definitely going to be the uh, name Mary of the game here. Stain is going to help out tremendously, too. You're talking yeah. about escapes out of the corner. If you can get an opportunity to get Stain on the other side, so you can go for teleport. Yep. That's going to be pretty critical here for Testament in those situations. But uh, we'll see how aggressive some of this team is going to be, because that is going to be the surefire sign of how we play this matchup out. Because IDOM definitely has a pretty strong set play with Testament. If you've been watching on TNS yeah. uh, every week, like IDOM has consistently gotten better and better throughout the series of playing this game. Mm -hmm. We'll see how Testament plays against the Goryuki for IDOM. I mean, Sun Ace has a tall order here to make sure that we keep that offensive pressure going. Yep, let's see it. Game number one. Heading right on into it, we're starting off with the 6K, so I wonder if we're looking for a low cost opportunity from Sun Ace Keen there, but already cornered here for IDOM. Nice back dash, very fortunate. Got a little uh, telegraph there on the walk-up throw, so yeah. that was a good call from IDOM. A stomp block, but yeah, Beyblade tried to push out with the FD. Not what we're looking for, though. Burst does get blocked. Tons of damage, and just like I said at the top, right? Staying in that corner, right in Testament's face, they're going to have such a problem getting out. Exactly. No opportunity to try and challenge as soon as you get pushed over to that corner. Great read with the RC as well to bait up that burst. Now, Idom, 50% burst, right? I don't know if Deflect Shield is really going to do what you need to try and escape that corner. So we're trying to be tricky with the teleports and hold on to this mid-range. Nice. Get the full stop at the low. A 2S. Nice close slash here. She's already like a couple mistakes, and Sunday Keen takes almost no damage, and then returns the favor with something like this. Just one, two significant combos. Oof. Yeah, hard knockdown. We're gonna recover a lot of blood as well, waiting for that 50 meter to come back up. Adam has the burst, immediately gonna spend it. Yeah, I mean you want that space. You have teleport for you in the background here, which Adam certainly takes advantage of. Wild assault continues pressure here. Maybe expecting the YRC. That's where we had I the little so, delay yeah. right there. Yeah, trying to bait out the reversal option there, but. 50 bursts and 50 meters spent. Doesn't matter because we have all the blood in the world. Sun Ace Keem takes game number one. That's so hard to worry about a full screen low. Yeah. Like, you're sitting there trying to walk back to get the room for Testament to play their game plan. But at any given moment, again, you constantly have to go down back as you're slowly walking away because Beyblade's going to be such a problem. The Grave Reaper is certainly getting set up here. Nice tap dust, but burst right away. Yeah, I think it's interesting that we're seeing from Sunday's scheme, right? Being a little conservative on the round starts, we saw 6K, we saw 6P, these attempts at, you know, bloodless counter pokes to try and win that round start. So I think it's working out a little bit uh, less in their favor going into game number two. I mean, gosh, you gotta worry about that far slap from Testament. Yeah. It's such a good button for them. Uh, so I think that's probably why we're going for the fast button. Yeah. The quick interrupt, they're far reaching normals for Nagori Yuki. Already getting this hard knockdown here and the game round, excuse me. Ooh. There we go, straight through the glass. I wonder if we're going to see some blood spend on the round start here just to make sure we secure it. Yeah, it's a little lower for the meter economy, but oh, we're just sticking out the far slash. Nothing found. Idom with the walk back applies the stain state. Staggers the slash series there. Yep. 5k interrupt and nice call out after stain state. Sun Ace Keen certainly going to get punished for another 50% tension. The opportunity here just sealed the deal. Idom returns the favor, one all in the set. So we're used to Nagori Yuki rounds being incredibly quick, right? I feel like we are not quite as used to it from the Testament side, right? right? But of course, Idom able to hold it down, really swap up the story from that first game. So game number three, Sun Ace Keen just swinging on through with the far slash. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly like a perfect storm for Testament to get those opportunities. BSU, so that's a big opportunity for Sun Ace with yep. the defensive burst here to hold on to that corner position. Shatter. Yep, straight into the super. Item has burst available, but that health oh. lead is so large, right? Especially with the hard knockdown. Probably going to save it for the next round, I imagine. I mean, tragically, Idom just got guilty geared in this round. Like, this is literally, I mean, it is a guilty gear round at this point. It's going to be a tall order for comeback. You're going to hold on to burst. It's just one touch that Sunday is looking for. That 2S is going to do it. Yeah, tall order, but you got to watch the toes. That low Woo! clipping you. And speaking of, another low with the Fukio back right into the Beyblade. Tries to bait up the burst once again, but Idom a little more conservative on it. Rage. 
Yeah, nice call here to back off on the combo. Go for the extension because look at the b Blood Rage dealing the damage here. We take the longer combo route for IDOP to get the finish much easier. Thank you for doing the work for me. Greatly yep. appreciate it. Exactly. Just give the Blood Meter time to drain some of that health. Start out with the 6H launch, but now stuck in the corner off the Wild Assault. Once again, IDOP, let's build up the full burst. The interrupts here. Nice blocking low. Got to pick up the Grave Reaper. Low armor sign does get blocked. Seems to shut down the Fukyo. Yeah, I like the fast OC. Now we're delaying the burst from Idom saying, all right, I'm not trying to get baited this time. I'll take a little bit more damage for it, but at least I can escape. Now I can TP out of the corner. Another low armor sign there to push you right back out. Using the Wild Assault to close the gap. I really like that option, but now you're low on resources. That's all the better here for Idom with almost going into danger here. And the penalty is a threat. 100 tension available. Out. There we go. Pick up the stage. Yeah, at least we get the OTG, set the Succubi once again for the full pickup 50 meter for the Super Idom. All right, takes game number three here, 2-1. Yes, yes. I think the big call here was that one round in particular where Sunday's team really went full hog on the Blood Rage meter yes. there. Like, immediately spent because, yeah, you can. You're hoping to get that back, right? That's the gamble that you can take as Nagoriyuki. Yep. And if you, against a character like Testament, if you open up that defense, you're going to get that reward back. You're not yes. going to run the Blood Rage. But the fact of the matter was that, you know, Idom, very strong in defense there, taking their time. And then noticing the fact that, hey, I see you cranking up towards level three. Yep. And reset that combo. Great awareness for IDOM going into that game. Yeah, let's see if we can seal it out with 3-1. This is a, a big departure from that first game, right? Where yep. Sunny's game was kind of just running over the testament, able to just bring you over to the corner and, you know, bait out a lot of these reversal, oh, reversal yeah. options. But now that Idom kind of has your number on the offense, right, we can delay some of those defensive options to make sure we're getting the most out of them. So game number four, the IP on the far slash, not enough. Here. Oh, got out of dodge, but unfortunately not able to challenge at the with 5P here. So close slash does work out here for Sunday's team. Still a strong lead burst available for Sunday's to try to effectively get out of one. 2H start, really? Yeah, I wonder what we were looking for after 2H. Maybe a reset on the IAD, but you yeah. know, 2S. Gets the burst out view from Sunday's scheme. Still a lot of help behind it and 50 meter to both sides, but look at the blood meter, right? We don't have a lot to try and escape. Yeah, this is why we're going full screen here. I want you to go to towards me because I get advantage out of this situation. Sure, you have far reach, but the moment you hit rage, I'm going to be A-OK. -okay. Yep. And if we super jump, right, that's a guaranteed sane proc up against the wall here. With 150 more meter after the super, I still don't think we're able to kill. Yeah, honestly, though, well played from IDOM so far. Oh. oh, that's Arbiter sign. They We're not going to get PRC caught. Right? Oh, <laughs> no. uh, it doesn't even matter. You're so far away. Just goes right on through the invul. Now it's set point for Idom. Great job here for Idom for that first round. Ooh, four bin. Does work out. Got the close slash pressure. Good FD from Idom. Looking for the space, the wild assault. Yo, these are some big spends from Sunday's team here. Yeah. And the last game, it cost Sunday's team quite a bit. But this time around, going into overdrive, we'll get the hard knockdown, not the kill yet. We are in the final touch scenario here, so one significant combo to close it out. So survive into the next round to try to turn the tide. Ooh, on the toes of the 6K, might as well RC just on the off chance we get that panic burst, but I'm gonna hold on to it. Still set point. See, nice Beyblade round start. See, now we're doing the aggressive Nicole Yuki, but the blood meter here, full screen scenario is all according to plan for Idom right now. Low Arbiter sign. Gotta watch out for the lows, much like that, to watch out for yours. Ooh. Oh, Wild Assault from downtown tries to get a little pressure after the Fukio, but the Idom knows there's an opportunity oh. to 2K. Yeah, good PRC right there to recover, because that whiff would have been devastating. Just called out by the Wild Assault. BSU, okay, Sun Ace Keem can pull out all the stops right now with 50% tension available. We can get the Shatter opportunity here. That'll do! Sun Ace Keem tying it up to all, and what an explosive round right there to make that catch. Yeah, I love the routing, right? Make sure you didn't break the wall a little bit too early. Built up enough meter for the 50 to kill with the super. And like you said, we're moving on to game five here in Winter Semis. Had you not gotten that BSU, it would have been Idom's game because yep. it would have been that whip punish their opportunity. Idom would have closed it out. We'd be moving on, but we're going the distance to all right now. Okay, already got the war wild assault. Ooh. Expensive spend whiffing on BSU. That's not a good look. And now Idom can take advantage, putting Sun in the corner. Full screen is an opportunity here, but the throw! One minor delay makes such a blunder here for IDOP. Back up here, see, still landed in the active frames. We're just going to do the bite three Woo! times in a row with the RC. We got 50 meter behind it. Now Sun Ace Keem is going to be on set point. Yo, off of meaty DPs, back to back on IDOP's wake up. But granted, 
looking for. Alright, I'm gonna do I'll try to attempt a gold burst right yep. there, but you're still holding on to it to try to take advantage of whatever resources you have left Ooh. in this next round. Nice, I like the delay oh, on the no. Fukio back Beyblade as well. Stopping Idom from going for this backdash round start that was a little bit safer, but got caught out by the Beyblade before using the burst to try and escape, but down to 50% HP. Yeah, so but once again, trying to stop the aggression from the Goryu, who seems to be the key factor here for Idom to really get ahead. And once Zane's key has your target locked, it's so devastating for Idom, but going to get that hard knockdown. Good stuff. Yeah, interesting. I thought we saw a little combo drop earlier, but maybe just going for the reset opportunity with the overhead straight into the low. Stain proc off of the 2L. But the EXE Beast isn't enough to kill. We have a little bit more health left. The gut's really kicking in here. 2K. Medium. I, you're bursting. You believe? Sun oh, believes! Man. Wait a minute. Close slash tap dust. We got the guard. Ooh. Nice, nice. Guard cancel pushing out here. Idon surviving for another round. Going the distance here, but no burst potentially here for Sun. Final game, final round, one round away from winners finals, and now we're pushing you over to the corner. No Jeez. burst available to keep the pressure up with the wild assault. So item fights back out, applies a stain state. And then pick up off of the far slash and us all the way over to the other coast. That could have been really bad. The first with 2k, second one following up. No overdrive. Already yeah. routing into this hit, but we still have so many resources, so much health. Guard cancels out. Oh, nice. I think that was low armor. Either way, jump in here. Idom closing it out 3 2 in what could have been a very different story here because once Sun Ace Keem turned up the ante on the aggression from Nagoriyuki, it put it seemed like we had Idom on a back foot right there to try to recover that full screen presence, to try to interrupt things, to try to take advantage of Sun Ace Keem pushing into Blood Rage so often. Yeah, I think Sunday Scheme was doing a really good job, especially on these round starts, right? Rotating yeah. not only the options that we're looking for, oh, let me be a little bit more conservative spending the blood yeah. while using some of these counter pork normals. Oh, okay, you're playing more defensive to try, you know, actively yeah. defensive to try and avoid it. Now I know that I can use the Fukio Beyblade or just Beyblade itself to catch out that backdash, right? Yeah. But I think once we pushed Adam over to the corner, sometimes these offensive sequences, they were a little greedy on the blood as well, right? You you brought it up multiple times. Oh, we're at level two, two and a half blood, and we still haven't opened up Idom. Now we have to back out to the full screen. Idom finds this light confirmed that even though it doesn't do a ton of damage, you're full screen against Testament, you have this stain state, and how are you supposed to make your way back in yeah. when you're gradually letting Idom build up so much meter from reapplying this stain state? Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, really well done in those corner situations there, not losing your cool, yeah. and being conservative on resources really was so pivotal to this victory for Idom here. I mean, of course, it was interesting to see that explosivity from Nagoriyuki for yes. Sunday's Keem, because it did get a lot of return on investment, but once Idom was able to lock it like it's almost seemed like once the switch flipped for uh Sunday's Keem, it was like that moment of shock of oh god, like you are yeah. actually gonna go this hard even though I'm blocking so well. And then once we kind of settled the storm, we were able to make that return. Yeah. Uh returning, of course, is Chris G though, coming back after the championship for Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. Now trying to make a, another championship appearance here for Guilty Gear Strax. Yeah, exactly. One championship wasn't enough. Staying here in the winner's side of top eight, headed up. Yeah, there'll be Baru right next to Chris. Coming up here with two Axel. It's I can't there's no way y'all doing the Axel mirror. <laughs> all right, all right. Be a little funny for the button check. All right. Loading up into this here. We'll yep. see if it's a button check though. I don't know. Neither player is looking <laughs> they're both They're laughing, laughing about it, having a good time. Down. But Axel Mirrors, of course, are definitely one of those longer matches that we'll see here. Um, you know, despite some of the new moves out here, we're both at the three stray hits. Mm -hmm. Gonna be quite the long haul on the set potentially. We're not gonna find the explosivity like we saw in the last game. Yes, so. I'm actually really excited. I do hope it's the actual mirrors, right? Because I feel like when you have two zoners up against each other, you know, even in normal matchups, you know, zoner against Rushdown or Shredder or whatever, sometimes you wanna swap up, you know, immediately go into a full screen and just run them down like they throw off the pacing. And then when you have the zoner versus zoner matchup, that, you know, expands even more so. Yeah, absolutely. Both gonna be fishing for the exact same yep. scenarios here, so. All right, here we go. Button checks were warmed up, ready to go. Hopefully you got your breakfast settled. Maybe your lunch. You came in for a nice early lunch. It was really cool, actually. They got some food trucks out here that are... Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Excited. there was like a thing? Filipino food truck okay, out there as yeah. well and a couple other options, so I'm excited to check yeah. that out after this. But these players are hungry for victory as we load on in, make sure the colors are all good. Audio through the headphones, big chilling. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean... Hold on, wait a minute. Chris is only wearing one set of headphones, actually. Oh, this is not a fully powered Chris. 
I don't know where we would put the other, you know, on top. You know what I'm saying? The classic Chris G headphones? Oh, yeah. It needs, uh, look, this is only like 25% Chris G right you're now. You're right. You're right. You've not achieved 50 or 70. This is you just Chris. No G. This is just Chris. Okay. With the 25% power up, you have to earn your way to the full power of Chris G. Mm -hmm. All right. So it does look like we're actually going to be having the axle mirrors here for the other side of Winter Stop 8. Dual one. Well, not into it. We got Chris G versus Baru. Stark, nice. Rensim, full screen. Baru on the blue axle. Trying to get left right going here. Bar slash goes back. No counter hit. Rensim explosion pick up here, and we could just kind of pull his own out here. Yeah, getting caught up by that cherry bomb, stuck mm. up in the corner, trying to find a way back in. Nice. Gets counter hit. Yep, Chris G in the base. Baru in the blue. Oh no, but the colors getting washed out here like an Instagram filter off of this time stop. So much damage. So much red on the health bar. Yeah, good start here for Chris. Hello. Jump out, full screen. Oh my goodness. I thought Jump S, the beloved, was going to be coming up. But Jump yeah, right. K here from Chris G to round it out. All right. Nice. We got the rainwater coming through here. Bring it back in. No left, right. Tries to go for empty low. Yep. Right, immediately <laughs> waiting for the resources to come back off of the gold burst. Just staring each other down, right? Yeah, just wait for that far slash. Because I know you want to do it. Come on yep. now. Push him back on the two H. Nice. Run seven. Full screen push. Okay. Double jump. No chance. Nice. Explosion. Lost a lot of tempo off of the jump in. Right, so immediate burst of Chris at about 50% to throw it back in the corner. Red RC to go for a shatter opportunity. Yeah, throwing it back for sure. 50 meter available. We're going to do a lot of damage off the Axel Bomber, but knowing that it's not going to kill, waiting for the 50 meter on Baru's side as well, opting to just go for that positive bonus. RC, dash Ooh. off 2K and still going for the overhead. That's always funny because you're going for the FD stand. And you're like, yep. all right, cool. Let me go low. And then you're already going to block low because you started hitting. You're waiting for the combo drop. Ah, yeah. overhead. Get caught in a very bad spot. Yeah, it's evil. The 6H overhead, you know, the low high action. I'm pretty sure it's minus on hit, right? But if it's able to close out the round, that's all you need. <laughs> We're swinging right into the windmill, but it's got so many hits. <laughs> the clash on 2H, 2H. Yep. Nice goal burst out. We're going to get a little positive bonus for you. You want that corner position. Nice. Oh. Yeah, it's away from the soaring strike. That sucks. But all good. Still 50 meter available on both sides. What are we spending that for, huh? That's a little bit of tension pulse you're going to have to deal with now. There we go. Got the straight hit in the side swap. Chris G immediately using the burst. Another one. Ooh. Very up the Winter sneaky, Mantis on the way down. Yeah. Full screen position one more time with the one cent and low on resources. Chris G could wrap round this out like a significant combo again. Like if we go for time stop the corner, but Jesus. Oh, I saw the PRC. I was wondering if we were going to get the 6P on the jump in, but no, just opting to hold the stand block. Okay. Good patience from Chris. Not pull back on the red cent there because we were in the sweet spot. Mm. Command grab. Let's sneak it in the clothesline for the finish here. Baru taking the round. If it works once, we'll do it twice. They're both laughing on the stand right now. Chris G's like, man, come on. You can't be doing this. You can't be a reaction checking me at 12 p.m. PST. All right, jumping on in here. Yep. Back, Nice, Oh, uh, yeah, I couldn't get that full screen burst. Try to get the anti air, but we're already too high in the sky. Chris, with the 5P, pull it back. There we go, off the jump in, reset into the rainwater, run up throw. Lots of meter for Chris G here, especially with a counter hit. Doesn't even need it to close out the round. Yeah, excellent close slash right there to get the pick up and tying up in rounds. How do we start? Far slash, but the jump heavy. Yep. Nice throw, actually. Very, very good. Very nice because you already had the blocks done there. You know you're not going to have the challenge. Faster option, too. Too far away for that 5P, and you pull it right back in. Good patience for Chris. Got the jump in, no anti air. Yeah, the close house. We're just jump canceling, right? Taking mm -hmm. to the skies, trying to bait out something, maybe a 2K. There we go. Red RC, Axel Bomber positioning. Nice reset for the, a little bit of extra damage out here instead of going for mitigation. Yeah, I wonder why we didn't go for the wild assault for hard yeah. knockdown, right? But I guess off of the hard knockdown, you know, what Oki are you really going to run as Axel? You just want to keep yeah. that, you know, make sure you have a defensive burst available in case Maru is able to strike back. Exactly. Oh, nice jump in. No burst quite yet, though. Chris, pretty confident Ooh. on this one here. Nine. Oh, what a call out on the burst! Chris G up 2-0 in the winner's semis. Confident indeed. Saw the pressure in Baru's eyes, just waiting it out, staring at that blue burst bar. Now you got two games to Baru zero. Let's see if you can put one on the board. Hello? What what told you to do that? Wait, Baru, wait a minute. Looking a little risky, but you still got the corner position. Yep. Even though that was an expensive corner position to get. Yeah. 
Building up a little bit of that risk, but really it's only straight hits already tied up with the life count and then some with the Winter Mantis. Chris is having a blast right now. He's grinning <laughs> ear to ear. He's got he's got the same energy as Axel right yeah. now. Every time he hits a button, he's saying Yahoo. 50 meter available on both sides. Couple far slashes, Tornado. Off the space. Yeah, but 2 age able to come through. We can still zone this out. Chris has all the time in the world. Oh, nice pullback. Oh, that Ooh. was so slick, though, to get the dash cancel off the close slash. Yeah, awkward off of the OTG. Maybe looking for that strike throw, but just delayed it a little too much. Chris G finds the back throw to put himself on set point. Right, yeah, just a small blunder, like you said, off OTG right there. Because honestly, that was a pretty cool side swap. Just yeah, right? not working out the way that you intended. Ooh. Jump heavy, though, to start it. Oh, but no full confirm yeah. off of it. It's unfortunate. Chris G already getting a lot of damage here off of that straight hit. Full burst available on both sides, but... Nice timing on jump slash. Nope, not going to work out here in the ant here. I got to throw out the 6H, uh, you know, every so often. Even when there's no meter behind it. Speaking of no burst meter to be found, so much damage off of this punish. Windmill, spin it to win it. No jump slash at all. Like, that would have really helped out if you would have done neutral jump slash and yeah. been able to interrupt. Tried to go for a little left, right. Air dash back out to the same side, but now you're still back up against the wall. Keep the windmill running. So we're out here with throw. Gonna get burst. Nice pickup off the rainwater and the finish. 3 0, Chris G. And it's clean to move on to winner's finals. Baru still chilling, headed down into the loser's quarter side. But hey, it looks like both of them had a damn good time playing the Axel. Here. Yeah, so what else yeah. can you really ask for? I mean, that, that's ultimately like when you both sit down as yeah. Axel players, like, well, we know what it is at this point. We're yeah. in for a long one here. Exactly. From yeah. the full screen distance and still great showing either way. Like um, like you said, the reactions from Chris G is still there, like being able to jump out of some of those command grabs. But yeah. even like Winter Mana still was being such a versatile tool on both sides. Yeah. You know, really trying to hide it in a couple instances. Like we caught one while landing yep. in a scenario. So, I mean, you're really trying to play around like the toolkit of Axel knowing full well like what you're capable of because well, you're also a master of the character, right? Exactly, so. yeah. It's so evil when, you know, you send the opponent to the top of the screen and then you start the Winter Mantis, this command grab startup. Yeah. You can barely even see it, right? Because the other axle is obscured. You're waiting for the camera to come back down. Right, right. And then it swaps back up to this camera angle. And you're like, wait, why am I getting command grab? Like, what, what happened? Yeah. But, you know, it caught Chris G off, you know, once or twice, I think, in yeah. that first game. But afterwards, he was like, right, I know what to look out for. It's not me reacting to the screen. It's me seeing the same setup that's been shown, you know, once or twice before. And now I know, okay, I know you like to go for the command grab here. Let me go for the ID and the full punish. Yeah, and being able to get those quick pickups after the fact, you know, yeah. off of some, some of these stray hits, being able to course correct like that, uh, yeah. you know, time stop in the first game was actually really nice. I, I wish the side slot would have worked out a little yeah. bit better there too uh, because, honestly, that was pretty cool to go for the close slash, dash yeah. cancel to continue that pressure. Just exactly. unfortunately tumble out, and Chris was still able to, you know, be awake at the wheel to and get that interrupt and uh, yeah. you know, push it back out. But our next set looks like it's going to be McBat versus Avarice Aeon. Yeah. So we'll get that up in just a moment as we get down into the lucha side of things here. In Level Up Expo 2024's $2,000 pop bonus goods to your Strive Tournament. Yeah, there's a lot of money on the line for these players to try and fight for. And over here in the loser's side, right? Last chance to try and make it as far as you can over here in the top eight. So, gotta, you know, lock in. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, it's been a, you know, an interesting weekend, you know, yeah. lots of games. They walked away, they just <laughs> left. They were they, like, oh, we're just, just going to gentlemen to rock, paper, scissors. You know what? Forget it. We're not, we're not playing. We saw those we're gonna first stop two by sets. Artist it's, it's fine. It's fine. That's it. Okay, okay. We'll stop by Artist Alley, whoever gets the coolest print wins. Yeah, that's true. I was trying to see if there were any Guilty Gear prints out there. I, I didn't really I think I might have seen one or two, seen but, one. you know, maybe a couple charms. Yeah, I've certainly seen. Oh, yes. I saw. Oh, yeah. actually, actually. Oh, my goodness. Um, Shoot. I don't remember the artist's name. I know Cola has the card of uh, there's this artist who's got pins that are, are movable. Oh, and, okay. Uh, so there's like an action gimmick with it. And they got Ryu and Ken oh, that's throwing sick. a Hidoken, and you pull back the draw so like the Hidoken goes out. Oh, the wait, that's it's sick. Really yeah. cool. They it got has Blanca. like a little slider. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Slider yeah. Like and that. there's like a Blanca that's spinning. No, that is uh, clean. Glows in the dark. There's a, uh, um, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's where it's got the normal mask of Freddy. we got the eyes, but then the it pops Five off. You can Freddy's. see the internal face, which is really cool. Some cool pins out there. So uh, definitely check out those artist alleys. I, I'm so sorry. I don't remember the booth, but definitely uh, lots of cool artists to check out throughout the venue. Of course, that's always fun to see, like, the type of merch you can get. There was yeah. one, uh, there's a sword station, like, they're selling, like, actually sharpened swords, like, about, yeah. like, 3K to pick up a sword, but, like, if you end up breaking the sword because you're doing, you know, you think you're a samurai, you think you're Nagoro yeah, Yuki, yeah. but you're really not, uh -huh. and uh, you try to break it, they give you a one-time repair for free. Well, that's not bad. So, you know, like, I feel like everybody good. gets one, you know, mulligan. You okay, get one let me reroll my sword yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that was pretty cool. Um, and also they've had, you know, of course, like, I really dig this. They're doing at cons lately is the uh, the cosplay repair stations. Ooh, they got a yeah. dedicated spot for someone to help you out with your cosplay to make sure they can get situated. Because some of these cosplays are extravagant. Like, they're yeah. difficult to get into and get out of. So exactly, once it falls yeah. apart, like, you want some of that help, they have that available here as well. So yeah. that's cool stuff to check out. Including the giant arcade cabinet here. We do have cosplay right up in the front. I forget this character's name, though. Oh, the the JJK character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, what yeah. you're talking about. He's the one who has the movie about him, right? Yeah, it has yeah, the movie yeah. Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. I've seen that um, game a million times. I feel you know, like. the, the father is also in it for yeah, the yeah. Uh, beginning of uh, season two. Yeah. Which is sick. Which is sick. There's a lot of Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, actually. I feel like I know a lot more about Jujutsu Kaisen than I've actually watched. Through I'm osmosis? not going to lie. It's, yeah, 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 through osmosis. Like, I, I don't have it muted on Twitter, which maybe is, like, my fault. Oh, yeah. I feel like I've seen... Like major manga panels, just like oh, scrolling through. I'm like, why are we using this yeah, for reaction know, image? Like, what's going on, man? I, you know, I got a bone to pick with some of y'all doing the I'd win thing. Hold on, That's you, what you're I'm posting saying. a spoiler out here. Like, I'm not reading the manga because yeah. it's so gorgeous, but I should read the manga. Like, I don't have the context, right? So yeah, maybe exactly, the spoiler isn't exactly. Like too That's much, like, but I, 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 I can spoiler. assume. Okay. So it looks like since the other two players have left, we're going to move on to our next match here: yeah. Sparrow versus Bran. We'll find out what happened to the other two. Hopefully after this set. Maybe yeah. they took a break. Maybe they're know. walking maybe, around. Maybe they needed yeah, to pick yeah. up some prints. I get it. If, if you left, that's all right, I guess. You know, <laughs> we'll, the show must go on. So we get Sparrow and Bran sitting down on the sticks in just a moment here. So thanks for bearing with us while we figure out the logistics of this during this uh, yeah, trying yeah. 2000 You left during a potential $2,000 top eight. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, I'm sure the rest of the top eight is like, all right, well, if they don't come back, you know, that's a little bit easier of a path for me to try and get right. a little bit of this 2K prize pool. Like, that's crazy. So I'll yeah. take it. All right, so they're about to lock in for this one in a moment here. But, yeah, That's it. You know, lots of great cosplay throughout this weekend here. Um, I'm trying to think. I've been, I've been hunting down some Gundam boots. You know, they got a lot of, did uh, you find anything? Kits. I did find some kits okay. out there for sure. Uh, but the, uh, some of them are just reprints already out there. Right, so they're recirculating. But I'm looking for a specific rare one. Mm. And uh, I remember last year there was one booth. They had a lot of P Bandai, the, the limited edition ones. So look oh, that. okay, okay. Gojo is sitting down <laughs> on the six. <laughs> Up against ordinary Guilty Gear player. That's ordinary <laughs> Guilty Gear player is crazy. Just that's what it is in the anime list. They got the the full list of the uh, the actors going. Oh ordinary, yeah, the credits. Ordinary Guilty Gear player one, Gojo. <laughs> <laughs> the comparison goes crazy, bro. Yeah. All right, loading on in here. We're still hovering over the axle from the previous match. Let's, we got the Gold Lewis. You know, Jobber is going to be stoked right now. Jobber, check this out. It's a Gold Lewis on stream. The big hoss, as he likes to call it. Oh, uh, we're going to see the denim gold. Oh, no. Leprechaun? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Pretty in red. Oh, no, that's Lupin. Pink Lewis? Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, okay. Blonde Lewis. Blonde and also, you know, this is, uh, oh, no, this is Green Day Lewis. That's what it is. <laughs> this is 100% Green Day Lewis. Dude, we were walking back, and we uh, we passed by the Slipknot Festival yesterday. Yes. It, was, it was going kind of hard, Yo, I'm not going to lie. I oh think Bring goodness. Me the Horizon was playing. Bring Me the I Horizon, like, oh. I was geeked out for Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah. Like, uh, I wish I was there listening, but also I could just stand across the street and listen. So Exactly. If we good. hadn't been yapping for the greater part of yesterday, we would have just snuck on in. But we're going to be uh, probably checking our buttons real quick just to make sure everything is all good. Wait. You got that bed man locked in? Wait, this no. could be this could be the button check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but never I mean, know. Like, some folks out here just uh, button check with actual characters that they play. Bed yep. man will be very interesting because not often we even get to see bed man at all. Dual I mean, one. even even just Yoshi out here still trying to make bed man. Work. Yeah, right. Playing the character for the greater part of a decade, if not more. Mm -hmm. Buttons are warmed up. Make sure the BTs are clean. Make sure the box ring is all good. Don't want the to errors are airing. You, you don't want to be caught being an American idiot oh, because true. you've dropped a button on your stick. Yeah, that would feel really well. Yeah, yes. Eight-way air dash working all good. Okay, okay. All right, Gojo about to do domain expansion real quick here before this match begins. What is Gold Lewis's domain expansion? Is that just drone? I feel like it's Maybe it's the laser, right? It's laser into drone, right? Because oh, that that's, even that's even a guaranteed hit, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that's <laughs> a difficult to blockable, <laughs> unless you want to take like half your health and chip. Right, here we go, our first Batman of the bracket. Yeah, with uh, Gold Lewis out here, and I don't envy the Batman in this match. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have the double white wild assault, right? But you know, they're not all made the same. They were a little bit more homogenized, I think, in a recent patch. But you yeah. know, the range that you're able to you know extend. 
and uh, the pressure options you have off of it. Might not always be the same here, right? But yeah. heading into a game, number one, a couple of big bodies. We got Gold Lewis versus Bedman, Sparrow versus Brand. The, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if you understand the matchup against Bedman because there's so few of them going out there. We'll wait for the replays to hit. Nice counter hit, though. Guys, we got the error follow up behind, but yeah, we're a little bit too far for the explosion. Block in the corner here with throw. That's an opportunity to P. Tried to follow up with the Behemoth Typhoon. Get the second one to come through. Yeah, burst in the 2K 2D. Get the drone off the screen. I agree. Send out the needle. The laser just barely misses, but we got the anti air on the way down. Nice lock in one more time. No challenge though from Sparrow. That was interesting. We gave an opportunity for Brandon to reset that set play. Yeah. I wonder if we go for the burst here, right? The, the life lead is not that bad. Goku has got a lot of guts as well, so taking that oh. damage builds it up. But we're confident in our defense. I say as we get opened up by the throw. I don't know if we're confident in our defense. We're, I feel like we're just kind of flabbergasted as to what to do at this yeah. point, right? Because we've missed out on a couple 2P opportunities in yep. the corner situation here against Bedman. And letting Bedman kind of reset and be able to reapply the, the countdown for the next move follow-up is uh, a little bit devastating in quarter situation. We didn't see White Ball Assault at all yep. either, so that's another one to try to get out. Typhoon, nice back dash, 2 k 3 d Yep, up with the standing BT. Back dash your way on out. Brand already lost a lot of health off of this round start interaction, but that is a lot of meter used on the FD, right? Almost yeah. 50%. We don't know how to defend here. That, that, that much is certainly clear. Brand is taking advantage of it. Yeah. We're able to get some good wins. Over in the nice. mid screen, we're just going to jump right on over the white wild assault. We saw the full Woo! burst do exactly what you were about. 50 meters still available for Brand. One more hit for the class, but it's a back throw. Yeah, that's a very fortunate back throw. We're blocking here, though. Nice pickup. Thanks to the drone being able to get this opportunity for Sparrow. Blocking the burst. Let's spend it for the round. There we go. We stabilize the situation here. Tie it up in the rounds. Like you were saying, right, the defense, I think, looking a little bit shaky against the Bedman. If anything, probably just match up in experience, right? Not yeah. exactly sure where the gaps are in the pressure. We're getting caught up by Counter to age. How much are we going to be able to get off it, though? Really not too much. Oh, gosh. All right, so we got our throw. Push in the corner one more time. Explosion falls through. Ooh, thanks to the countdown with Eric Hoy. Yeah, these straight pokes. Oh, no, a little bit late on the RC, so it's just tumble state. No real confirms. Jeez, nice counter hit. Not even quite get the finish. Crossed up. Red RC to get the pick up here. The back scratcher wow. too. Just barely didn't build up the burst. Only on the last hit. Sparrow takes game number one. That was very fortunate here. But that is the type of game that you might run into if you're yep. playing against Gold Lewis. They just need a couple hits to really turn the tide. That certainly paid off for Sparrow because he's looking all brown in that first round. All right, now we're seeing Sparrow play a little bit more aggressive, right? I think in that first game, our main objective was gather a little bit of data. Where can I try and match on the pressure? I have enough help to try and figure it out and develop that game plan for the rest of the set. But now, we're just busting straight out of the gate here from the round start, trying to keep the pressure on in the mid-range. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to get a gun out right now. So anyway, I'm tired I started of this, shooting. This, this robot badge coming at me, I'm going to shoot it. Uh-huh. Boom. Ooh. Yeah, that's too far away right there. I get the idea. Maybe expecting the, uh, the, the dash, top yeah. to come through. Yeah. Here we go, Chaos Ball. We got the RC behind it, trying to be a little greedy. Didn't want to spend the meter, and now you're giving up your life for it. Okay. Just a bit of a turn around here, Sparrow. Yeah, I feel like Sparrow's certainly finding some sort of uh, stride in the set so far. Yep. Once you kind of get over the the unknown, you're like, you know, maybe I just run my game. Yeah, and we were working on doing a little bit of that pseudo zoning, you know, poke yeah. you with the needle and then catch the approach. But now that Sparrow knows that White Wild Assault is one of the answers there to just advance and at least take a little bit of that screen space. Ooh. You see, are we crawling out here in the mid screen? Countdown clock, nice explosion. Okay, BRC didn't want to give an opportunity here for Sparrow. Nice cross up, no burst. The gun, meaty gun. Meaty minigun tries to take a little bit of meter, but I mean, you still have so much, but what you don't have is any HP left. Sparrow takes game number two. <laughs> you know, watching this to this point, you would think outside of like score count, uh -huh. Bran has been taking this pretty well, right? Yeah. Because the life leads that we're having, the fighting the unknown, but every time it's just a gold through a stray hit, like, you know what, take 70%, one more hit is gonna wrap it up. Yeah, 50% already. You yeah. didn't even get to finish the counter yet. And I think that's one of the things that you were mentioning, right, as we were looking at this matchup. Even with this counter hit 2H, right, what did we really get off it? We're still outside of the corner. We really didn't get a lot of damage. And off of the Oki setup, right, we have an Ooh. opportunity to back throw. Pick up off of the drone. You got 50 meter to bring down the system. 
gracious, the kill. Yep. Two-touch game there for Sparrow. There we go, and it could be a clean 3-0. We're one round away. Bram back dash into the 2-H. Time to play a little bit slow. No, instead we're keeping up the pressure with the error follow-ups, but still swiped out by the 2-6-8. Oh, no! no. With 2-H not looking good here. I have to imagine that was a mis-input BT. Just didn't complete the half circle. Now you're stuck up against the wall. 50 meter for Bran. Nice. Caught standing up. Go. Nice two peak. Yeah, the one reversal opportunity, you know, that uh, Sparrow, the quote unquote reversal yeah. of Gold Lewis. Yeah, we're really just swiping on through with the 684, right? Just trying to get that knockdown, and indeed we find it off of the RC. Not quite able to finish with this mid screen. Crossed up. Do it again. Oh! oh! What did we try and bait? Maybe a YRC, but into the Chaos Ball, it's still not enough to kill. Oh, tried to go for the guard, canceled the throw, we'll seal the deal. Yep. Brand still alive in this set. Look at the health, just barely a pixel staying alive, but it is still set point here for Sparrow. Oh, nice. Swiped out of the sky with the BTs, not afraid to just keep these hitboxes coming. Yeah, absolutely, just keep on going for this. Oh, but you attack with the clash actually worked out here in Brand's Ooh. favor. Yes, I like the catch on the back, but still really not going to get too much off of it, especially nice. on the mid screen. Uses the BRC, but just accelerates herself right into the hitbox. Trying to zone out now, too, just to keep Sparrow at bay, but so relentless is Cold Lewis. Red RC to extend the height time here. Yes! Good use on error code, though. Yeah, I like the pick up into the error follow up there. Nice little counter hit. BRC available, Ooh. 2P into oh. the knockdown. First to stay alive, 50 meters still available. You gotta get an opening off of this, but you have the deflect shield available for Sparrow as well. Baits it out, but no punish! No, don't let this be it. It is. Yeah, OTG, what a pickup. And again, that entire set was literally like, oh man, I got the stray hit off Gold Lewis, and I'm about to get another 50% damage for yep. your one singular mistake in your set play here. Yeah. A lot of that beginning was literally just, I don't know how to fight Bedman, and then suddenly, I guess I'll just be with Typhoon. I yeah, you you have enough health to try and you know experiment or play even a little bit passive, right? Okay, yeah. what can I block out here? What is the actual mix that I'm looking for? Is it more strike? Though, no. are we trying to be a little tricky with the eight way uh, eight way air dash? Right. And also, you know, it's it's like you were mentioning, right? A lot of these stray hits confirming into a really clean knockdown for Gold Lewis, where even you know counter hit two H from Bedman. Over here in the mid-screen, if you don't have that error already stocked up or yeah. really particular routing or meter behind it, a lot of these knockdowns were really just not giving us, you know, the Oki situations that we needed. Yeah. Not a lot of corner carry, not a lot of good setup, which gave the opportunity for Gold Lewis to scramble with that 2P. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, uh, great turnaround here just yeah. to remain calm, cool, and collected in those situations where uh, that band's kind of running the set against you, but you still know that. Look, all I need yeah. is just one. All I need is just I one. I need that Why one knockdown. I yeah, uh, but... Good show so far here, and good time here in Guilty Gear Strive. Thank you all yep. in the chat for hanging out with us. If you want to follow along on the road, exclamation point bracket does so. Yep. Level Up Expo is still going on. We do have even a schedule, so exclamation yes. point schedule to see the rest of the games that are happening today. Of course, we still have the Tekken 8 Top 8 going on, I believe. Or was I think it's going yes. on right now, yeah, yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. mistaken, right over on the TNS channel. Yeah. So. Lots of good fighting games to close out the weekend over here at Level Up Expo. It's a damn yes. good time. Yeah, Street Fighter is still on the way. Mortal Kombat yeah. 1 on top of it. So plenty of great games to be looking forward to on these last few hours of Level Up Expo. I mean, it's, it's been a spectacular weekend, fun time in Las Vegas. Much larger venue. Uh, and, of course, like we've been saying, it is the... Um, uh, a preview, right, of yes. EVO. You know, this venue floor, if you've not been uh, to the, uh, the Las Vegas Convention Center, we are in the West Hall, right? So much larger uh, than what the North Hall was, which is where we were at last year for Level Up yes. Expo. And yeah. the space is just tremendous, because last year we were sharing that space with the um, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, yeah. tournament that was going on here. So we're definitely going to... Actually, we might be able to take a, a little peek at the uh, venue here in just a moment. I think the, uh, the production is trying to set that up for us. You can take a gander at the, uh, you know, different opportunities you have here. Oh my goodness, Nanami is out in the front row? That goes so hard. Okay. Big fan, big fan. Let's go with IDOM in the background there, just chilling. Hello, uh, top of the morning to you. <laughs> top the of the, wait, I didn't notice the hat. I'm not even gonna lie. I was like, oh, <laughs> cool shirt. <laughs> and then of course, I don't know if this, oh wait, this is Genshin, the Genshin? Yeah, the okay. Crystal ball, there we go. Ooh, okay. Cool, Okay. big fan, yeah. There's, there's a lot of cool cosplays walking around yes. uh, Level Up Expo. Yeah. Big Even as we're, you know, just walking in, we're like, oh, let's go backstage. And I'm like, oh, cool. Yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of cool craftsm craftsmanship headed as you, uh, you know, walk around the menu. Oh, it's yeah. A good time. Yeah, that artist alley is uh, spectacular to go through. We keep talking about it. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I just need more wall space. In fact, what I'm going to have to do is just keep putting up walls and just, just get a second house. My neighbors. You know what? In this economy, why not? 
at this point, it's just get another house. It's simply as simple as that. Simple as that. You want more wall space? Just get more walls. Get How are house. you going to get more walls? Just get another house. Yeah, you, you could know. build a shed, I guess. I'm sure that in 2024, people our age are certainly going to be able to I hear it's quite affordable. House. Yeah, yeah, just easy peasy. Just do that. Unfortunately, Mick Bat <laughs> is going to be DQ'd from this top eight. Did yes. not appear in time. Didn't make it in time. But for the rest of the competitors, right, they're like, all right, yeah. one less person one to have to worry about for this 2K prize pool. We will take it. We're going to take you guys up to the other side of Loser's yeah. Quarters. So we're going to be seeing Sun Ace Keem versus Avarice Aeon. Yeah, so we continue on that Loser's Run. You know, it'd be such a shame. McBat is probably in line for one of the voice actors right now. So Entirely possible, yeah. I would possible, rather yeah. hang out with the voice actor than try to win $2,000. I get it. I get it. Which, you know, it's... There's a lot of good things happening at any given time, yeah. right? We are we are spoiled for choices over here in the FGC, and of course also at Level Up Expo, right? You, yeah. you can only choose one at any given time. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's uh, that's much like you know fighting games in general. You yeah. have several choices available to you, but you can only make one decision that will either make or break you in the set here. And as we get into this Avarice Aeon, of course, we are... We remember from uh, last night, yeah. Grand Blue, Turned right? Turned up so, with the Charlotta. Yeah, yeah, so I wonder yeah, what yeah. the you know similarity is there as far as archetypes. Who is the Charlotta type character in Guilty Gear Strive? I, May? What is that? Oh, I guess so. Yeah. Kind of like not. You have the, the you have the May charge. May has the yeah. charge to go with uh, Totsugeki here, but looks like we might have a bike in. Chat. Oh, okay, okay. Y'all might be popping off of this bike. We Yuki. shall see. But uh, yeah, of course, Sunday's key. You know, making those critical decisions to. Make that explosive damage with the Goryuki. We'll see how the gap closes out here against yep. Biken. Um, these two are going to be very interesting. Jump Slash is definitely a, a great button for Biken against the Goryuki. But of course, Round Start is going to be so critical here. We've seen how conservative Sunday's Keen can be at Round Start. And I wonder if that was just simply because of Testament Round Start to kind of see, like, all right, I'm going up against Idom. Yeah. Let me figure that out. We'll see if that still holds true here after the button check in just a moment. But with Biken. You know, Frame Trap City, right? You're going to have the Kabardi kind of help things out here. Of course, keep things locked in with the Tatami Matt. Like, I think that's going to be really important in this matchup. Yeah. Constant pressure against Nagoro Yuki, avoiding explosivity, because you can play outside the range of Nagoro Yuki, but you both really want to be kind of close together because Biker doesn't have much outside of, what, gunshot, really, which is 50% yeah. tension, which you're not doing that It takes screen. quite a bit, yeah. I think, you know, risk reward as far as trying to challenge on that level two blood, right? It's, I. I have heard this is pretty frustrating for biking players, you know, consistently getting outranged once you spend a little bit of that blood and trying to make your way on in. Right. Yes, of course, you get a lot of damage, you know, with that lower defense modifier, but it's trying to get that first hit and also consistently picking up off of it, right? Some of these combo conversions from Biken, depending on where you get that straight hit, can be a little finicky. So yeah. let's see it. Heading into game number one here, Sun Ace Keem versus Avarice Aeon. Cannot change society. So instead of reflecting on themselves, Who'd they, reflect they blame on? the beasts. They blame the beasts? Surely not themselves. Oh, okay. Avid. Let the intros rock here. Samurai versus Samurai. She put the sword away, though. Wait, just, so if she said lose, then we'll play? Yeah. Well, I guess that's why we're down here in the loser side, right? It makes sense. I just, how does that work? <laughs> Mm. Speaking of, we got losers quarterfinals game number one. Let's see. I imagine Sunday's game is going to be a little aggressive here. No, instead just jumps right over. The 2H has the time to whip, and Avarice Aeon finds the 5B. I'm totally with you. Like, I'm shocked that we have not seen an aggressive start from Sunday's game. We saw a little bit against Idom, but yeah, it was the after the established game, that first game where we decided, you know what, let's turn it up. But then yeah. we pull back again uh, later on in the set. We'll see if that changes at all. YRC to get Ooh. out. Nice yo, Johnson. Yep, probably the cross up. It's gonna be a while till we have any more resources, so this stray Yosansen hit is also gonna let you get back. Oh, going no. a little too early on the bite. Yeah, a little too plus on the block stun right there. Sun is keen, looking a little worse for wear, but one explosive connection. Close slash, back dash. There we go, just avoid the bite. Saw it once. Gonna try and avoid it again. Avarice takes the first round. A nice 6P. Home. I can't believe he at that range. That was way too close. Yeah, now we're at this perfect level 2 blood, right? Which is not too bad. We have enough blood to try and go for a conversion into a wall break. Also getting a decent amount back off of the 6H. Sweeps with the 2S2H. How are you supposed to escape consistently getting caught out with the... No! No okay. way. Oh, no. At least it hit. Team just stood there for a second. Yo, Zonson. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Blocking into oh. that with though. That's okay. You got PRC. Opens up. There's your burst. Sunday keep trying to stay alive right now. Burst right back. Avarice trying to close it. This is it. The throw. Ooh. Tried to play into the scramble. Wanted to give it up for the burst. Even 
that second round, they're already fist bumping. They're like, all right, that was kind of nice. Yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> we're both scrambling, really but that was scary. also kind of funny. All right, round number three here. No burst available on either side. Tried to spend all the resources to close it out. Cross up for the low. Good. 6P, yeah, that was to prevent the Kabari attempt. Yep. Okay, with JP to time the JS. IRC still able to reach even after the Fukio, so we are swinging with the counter at 2H. Yeah, no meter behind it. Avers Aeon, I think, is, is fine with letting these Rosan sets rock even with no meter, right? Something that we see from, you know, players like Rat just letting the Bad Moon rock, but a little bit too high for the wall splat. Yeah, that's certainly scary to go for something that's so unsafe, right? To have that happen to you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Swept out of the sky. Sour spot, but still should be able to kill with the wall splat. Game number one over to Sun Ace Keen. All, right, all laughs and smiles here for that first game. All right, let's clean this up a little bit here. This is, um, <laughs> keep in mind, though, this is Avers Aeon's first game in yeah. this bracket today. So. Exactly, yeah. Probably had a little bit of warm up, but that's about it. Taking these guys here with the JD dashing back in, but. Finds a parry opportunity. 2H does continue to go for the combo. Try to go for the tap dust, not going to work out, so Sunny's team will answer. Fine. Oh, oh, we're blocking. Tell me you're blocking. DPPRC able to block out the Super Sun Ace Keen. All right, off to go for the Rekka series. Just make sure we get the far slash and recover all the blood for the next kill. Good awareness here to at least go for the PRC. Oh, Yozatsu for the heavens above. Yep. Top rope waiting it out off the DP. Ah. Just resets it to the close slash. That's so scary to deal with because yes. you know there's the follow-up on DP. So you have to play the guessing game. Oh man, are you gonna full send or is it my turn? Here we go, hard knockdown straight through the wall. Decent amount of blood to work with, especially recovering it after the super tap on the toes, but no burst to be found. Oh no shot. Plus frames though. Yeah, fireworks in your face, cross through for the grab, set up the tether. I can't believe we got the throw. I can't one. believe we blocked the cross up too. No, trying to go for parry, got counter hit for on the low to less. Ooh. Trying to swipe on through, nothing found on the 2H. No punish nice. off of the whip, though. Good interrupts on 5P here from Average Aeon. Yep, just barely builds up the 50 meter for it as well. Any hit, any Ozanta should be able to kill. Oh! But the speed goes right on through. Nothing found off the super. But we're still making fireworks of the round. Avarice Aeon ties it up. Yo, I love the fact that we're representing the uh, reversal super, but so fortunate for Sunday's game to have that 6P already input to yep. so just avoid the shot entirely. That is so crazy. Yeah, I'm out of bullets, but I'm not out of options here. But still, no opportunity to get the tether. Lots of health. Already lost from Avarice Aeon, but we just go straight to the Escabari. Escabari, side swap here for the better positioning. Yep. Cooper does into nothing. Yeah, just That's trying to wait it out. We had a lot of defensive uh, options from Sunday's game, so maybe yeah. trying to bait out the Flex Shield or a Burst, but we really haven't seen much of either. But wake up 6P. Yeah, yeah you got to be a little bold there. Running for the throw. OTG. Oh, no! Might have been able to kill with OTG 5H, but still now we have the bite. All the blood in the world. Oh. Oh, we're bashing. Not enough to kill, but we got the behind the back Yozansen to tie it up 1-1. One, one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, looking a little scrambly here in these rounds, in these final moments for both players. But to come out on top, that's the important thing here. Avers Aeon to tie it up, like you said here. Burst off the rip. Sun Ace Keem is going to start this round pretty strong here because of that. That's a great boom. Ooh. There you go. Tried to go for the jump back to Tommy. Just caught up by the Fukio forward slash. Lots of blood recovered. And we have the hard knockdown off Wild Assault. Nice. See? Flash on through. Now we can play the Mario Party minigame. Caught out just barely by the far slash. It's a perfect for Sunday's game. Yep, all because we spent that burst off from Rip instead of taking our licks. Ooh. Don't pick up on the far slash here. Still good. You have a decent amount of blood to work with. You got to wait it out now, though, at the level three. <gasps> yes. Just barely didn't pop. Yeah. I mean, honestly, thanks to the slash series. A nice 6P. No Fukio. So you, you have to be careful in your approach, but Sunday's game is just going to be comfortable chilling out because you don't have much to worry about outside of, uh, you know, Ooh. until Viking gets a mid-range. Yeah, the full charge for the bounce. I wonder if we might have been able to kill, but now it doesn't matter. Bait out the burst. Sun Ace Keem goes up 2-1. There we go. Answers back. Pretty good, and that's all the snowball effect of that one blunder that does add up over time. But the fact that we spent burst so early this time around, I think we're going to hold on to it, right? Lesson learned and already in core position. Using Wild Assault just a bit better. Right? Yeah, I like the super jump, right? Now we're seeing a lot more Wild Assault coming out from Sunny's team, so really just trying to avoid the hitbox, but can't avoid being caught up in the corner. Lots of meters spent on the FD, but you do find a little mash out. Yeah, 
5K, pulls it right back in, 2K, 2D. Johnson whiffs. Oh, I wonder if you're looking for the empty low there, if we actually just missed time the ID over either way behind the back, pick up into the 2S. Tommy and OG. Ooh. Yeah, BRC gives you the opportunity to mix right after, even on the block, Johnson should be able to kill with the wall splat. You know, back and forth on these two here, but again, it's an interesting expense to spend in that last round at about 50% health. You can spend first from Avers Aeon uh, just to at least get some breathing room, and we still didn't get that full screen scenario. Sun is keen with the Beyblade. We're hitting that level two. There we go. Now you're up against the corner, right? This is almost kind of Grand Blue Zone energy, right? Just waiting for it. You still have enough blood for the specials and counter hit Beyblade, but you in a rough spot, and so is the bite. All the blood in the world to work with. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that Slash series was important just to slow down the blood build. Yep. So that way we go into Rage, and then even better, we got BSU. Positive bonus, so lots of opportunity. Nice low parry. Yeah, Avers was certainly waiting for that in the previous game. And unfortunately, got counter hit because you go high parry. But this time around, look at the benefit you get. A couple spends on resources. Ooh. PRC blocks the burst. Sun Ace King with the round. Yeah, spent the resources, but you still made sure to keep the 50 in the bank for the PRC. Just staring at that burst bar. Now it's set point for Sun Ace Key. Again, trying to slow down the pace here and catches you out on the whip 2H. Yeah. Nice. Right. Double jump, no more air actions left. Slashes, oh, what a clash on the 6B. That's a big opportunity for Avers to turn around. He's trying to go for <gasps> Able to get the whip punish off of the Kabari follow up. Even on whip, you built the 50 off of getting hit, but now your back's up against the wall. Once again, caught up with the counter hit Beyblade. Break the glass with the super. There's no way that was in the parry start. Yeah. Did I did I see that? Like, there's no way. I would imagine not, at least not from that far out, but really far cry from being able to seal this run back out. You need a couple good hits where Sunny's keep barely needs a light confirm. Jumps out, tries to go for plus frames to go for the invulnerability. This will catch and get the kill. Sun Ace Keem said, ah, 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 you ain't going to take the plus frames from me. Ooh. But that is so unfortunate because I'm pretty sure we went for parry in a couple of those situations here. We saw mid parry come out. And parry's great. We saw that one work low, but we never went back to low again. I wonder if that was just like muscle memory to go for the regular parry yeah. as opposed to low parry. So that was pretty unfortunate there because I think you had your answer, just not the one that you were looking for yeah. in that specific instance here. And that set ender was clean. I'm not going to lie to you. I think Shoot. I saw the super flash and I was like, oh, you have the health, you have the resources available to block this out and then get your turn back after. And then we saw the super flash coming out for the reversal and I was like, oh, I wouldn't have even thought, right? Just yeah. seal it out there. Don't even give them the opportunity to bring that round back. So Sunday Scheme moving on to losers semis. Yeah, I mean, great spatial awareness from Sunday Scheme throughout yeah. that set. Uh, a great understanding of that matchup to try to navigate the space. Yep. And yeah, I mean, we saw a couple of little scrambly situations here, but again, it's about who comes out on top and makes the most yeah. out of it. And we had some back and forth there, but that final one, you know, okay. yeah, definitely a favorite moment here. Returning to the stand here, though, is Baru versus Sparrow. All righty, let's see it. So we're going to be seeing some Axel versus, oh, who did Sparrow play again? Forgetting off the top of my head. Uh, it was, it was Gold Lewis, Gold Lewis. Oh, there we go. Oh, Axel Gold Lewis. So yeah. this is a, a matchup that I think is has changed in a lot of people's opinion over time, right? When it first dropped, you know, when Gold was first headed onto the scene, you know, I don't think we realized how strong the uh, guard crush on the Behemoth Typhoons were. And he also didn't have White Wild Assault, right? So going into Axel, it was kind of like, oh, man, this is a bracket demon. That's going to be rough for me oh, to yeah. try and make my way in on. But the addition of Wild Assault, you know, added this one on some of these normals as well. I would imagine Axel feels pretty bad, especially as you're getting some of these stray hits. You're building up a lot of that burst gauge to get another White Wild Assault and have Gold Lewis get that one turn victory. Yeah, I mean, and it's also death by a thousand cuts in this yeah. matchup, too. Like, you're not trying to get close enough to allow for a Behemoth Typhoon reversal op or even just like a 2P interrupt. Yeah. Like, those situations would be so scary. And we've seen before that Baru is just willing to kind of just like chill out and just, you know, fine. Like, I, I'm getting beat up a little bit here, but I know exactly. one, one Behemoth Typhoon will turn this around. Uh, let's see if Sparrow can kind of play outside this range here, like we're seeing here already. That 5P is going to be a great opportunity to interrupt. But unfortunately, like some of the tools, like you said, drones can really make things miserable for Axel. Yep. Uh, you know, the, uh, the swordfish as well, the Gatling gun, is also going to be a problem at the full screen scenario. We'll see how they play it out because uh, Gold Lewis is certainly going to be tough to deal with. 
Yeah, I think it's easy to think, oh, okay, yeah, this Axel, you know, you have so many ways to cover Gold Lewis any point on the screen. You know, you mentioned 5P, right? A really good check to try and keep him at bay while being relatively safe. But once you start committing to, you know, some of these longer duration normals, you know, you have the 2H, you have the Rensen, if you're able to jump over some of those soaring strikes, you know, you get JD, you have all the range in the world, you're able to get that one turn started, and then it's super scary for Axel to try and escape, even with... Wait, 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 wait. Ooh, ABBA! This will be really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We heard the really, theme, really fun. and now we got the character yes, on yes, screen. Yes, yes. We got Axel versus ABBA, the newest character yes. to Guilty Gear Strive. Oh, my goodness. And even had it backwards earlier. Baru is actually the Axel player, not the... Uh, oh, the okay, player. okay. Uh, but, yeah, so Baru going up against Sparrow's ABBA this time around. So, Gold yes. Lewis. Uh, interesting, because, like, you, she is so fun in a dynamic way like yeah. it's just yeah in this state this is terrible but yo hopping over immediately i'm sorry 5p devastating button for axel right now it's gonna be up to into this jealous rage you do have that armor up to take the damage and build up your jealous rage dash is awful you're gonna look for that manual install in the full screen scenario yeah and you are just gonna play this game this is when we start playing real guilty gear though nice and all according to plan spin to win out here for baru yeah and i love the catch on the uh, automatic jealous rage id right baru able to react in time looking for that anti air oh no finds the jump in but sparrow not enough jealous rage to get anything off of it there we go Go to the key grab for the meter. There we go. Yeah, got the shatter opportunity. Are right, still in jealous rage. Just actually dwindles down as uh, slower if you go into combo. Potentially going to get this kill here because the damage output of ABBA alone is substantial. That, you know, we took a little bit of chip damage on the way in, right? Yeah. With the uh, counter hit JH, but essentially two hit round here for Sparrow, right? If you're able to make your way in off the Jealous Rage, Mario was doing a good job of playing that keep away for a little bit, but, you know, what we're seeing a lot as well, right, is this armor, the parry <laughs> coming off in Sparrow to get a little bit of that gauge from the full screen. Yeah. Nice, got another one there. Looking pretty healthy on Jealous Rage meter. No setup, got crossed up. I wonder if an RC might have been able to seal out the round, but either way, PRC to get the anti air. Yeah, and that's why we were sitting there for so long for the spin cycle to be out there. You got the meter to cancel, and you're seeing in this next interaction that interaction paying off because you already know that PRC is at the forefront of Faru's mind, so Sparrow can't jump in. Yep. Man, this is scary, right? You have opportunities, you know, on the 2H and on the red set to try and go for that parry, but immediately, right, we're seeing the command grab saying, oh, if you're comfy at the full screen trying to build up this gauge, let me discourage you from trying to do that and see if I can bait you into rushing down. Ah, nice catch on the activation of the Jealous Rage. Let me go for the command grab. Misses the combo setup. Expecting a jump. Uh, I think jump dust might have been the best option right there from Sparrow. She gets pulled in from the windmill while she's untransforming, while she's relocking. That is, yeah. it's probably not exactly what you want off of the windmill there, but you know, we saw one example of the ABBA round. We saw a bunch of ways that we could go for this counterplay where Baru is saying, no, 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 you can't get this meter for free. And right. even when you have the Jealous Rage available, it's not a free game. You know, I like the dash uh, input there. The command dash tried to low profile one of those, but unfortunately the jump in is going to find the hit. Baru in complete control again. And this is the problem. When you're not in Jealous Rage, you're at a full screen disadvantage. ABBA has terrible movement to close the gap, so you have yeah. to force the install yourself. Because ideally, mm. ABBA wants to get the key grab to transform, and now we're back to full screen. Goes from DP to try to get the uh, um, lingering hurt box there. There we go. We really didn't have a lot of meter to get anything done off of the Jealous Rage and off of this manual install as well. Not sure what we're looking for. There's really no duration to cover the screen and also get a conversion. I like that we're, you know, leading into the grounded movement a little bit more after we go for the install, but still barely any health to Sparrow's name. Yeah, guard cancel gets baited out. There's a jump heavy to finish it. Baru taking that lead. Shout out Zando for the raid as well. I see you. You made it just in time here for losers. Quarterfinals gets your strong. All right, sending out the Ren Sense. Bring you all the way right to the close range. Send nice back, back nice. dash. Dodging the winner man is there. Let's see. Nice. Continue pressure. About to knock out a Jealous Rage. So that's great patience from Baru. No. With the JS, yeah. but we just go straight into the snail to catch you right back out, Sparrow. There we any help. About to build up the burst, but still should be able to kill <laughs> with the time <laughs> stop. Oh, okay, I see you, I see you. No shatter! Oh, but still able to get this pick up here anyways. 2-0 lead right now for Baru. Yeah. If we're being generous, we can say, oh, we knew it wouldn't kill off of the wall break, so we're just going for a cheeky reset, but I think we're just a little bit late on the axle armor. Either way, off of the wall tech, able to seal it back out. 
Yeah, yeah, that's Ooh. unfortunate though. I mean, at least you were able to hold it out, like you said. Yeah, and it's so tough for Sparrow to really find that comfortable position. You want to get close here, and every single time, Bar is just playing this game exquisitely. Like it is literally just, I'm gonna be full screen, keep chipping away at health. It's not that 5,000 cuts like it would have been that whole Lewis set. Yep. But, nice. Of course, that jealous rage opportunity, full stock, so lots of room for Abba to play Guilty Gear. Not quite finding the hit. Jumping will get anti air, and now we're back to that recent full screen. We're not going to rebuild our resources again. Man, this was great, right? We had almost a full meter install, baited out the burst as well, or used the burst rather. But still Ooh. not able to get anything off of the second half of the bar. Now, no health to your name. Still using the FD to try and avoid this chip damage. Oh, nice. Jump Swing. Up. You know, I'm surprised we're not seeing so much of the heavy slash here from Abbott. Like, that's such a great button at yeah. those ranges, but also Axel does have the faster button. So in a situation yeah. where uh, far slash becomes a threat, heavy slash might be... There it is. Actually, never mind. They heard it pumping through the speakers. They were like, you know what, Zero? You're kind of spitting on this one. And now full install, full meter. Baru has no burst available, just waiting for it to come back up off of these next hits. But it's going to be a little bit. Might be able to kill before you even get there. Super available for Sparrow as well. Yeah, no IAD in, just kind of try to go for another low slash, it looked like there. 100% uh, tension, and we're going to drop out of this Jealous Rage. Oh no, we dropped with the Axel Bomber as well, looking to try and bait out this burst. Spent the meter on the RC to try and bait it out, now we don't have meter yet off of the penalty, and the FD for the projectile, super air grab is not enough! We're trying to take a round here. Nice, the jump dust. Actually, no, that was jump dust. That's uh, the slash, slash. Yep. Sorry, jump dust is the butt slam. Oh, yeah, a little down B action. Yep, yep, yep. So now, you know, I like that you bring up the 5H. Immediately started seeing it as well. And now we're seeing the 2P. This is a fast, you know, normal coming off from Abba. Four frames, if I'm not mistaken, right, that we haven't been seeing in this close range. So still set point for Baru. Might not get the opportunity to use it. Enough meter for the time stop to bring you all the way to the corner. Nice. Bomber. Oh, no. Okay, okay, there we go. Full <laughs> jump. Not going to whip the Axel Bomber this time. Nice. First. Baru just looking for stray hit to continue on to this loser's quarters. This is rough. Any runs and follow-up should be able to kill. There we go. Off of the reel back. Seals it out. Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, goodness gracious. I, I was surprised we kind of stuck with the uh, Abba throughout the whole set there. Yeah. I mean, she's great, though. Like, if you do end up getting in Jealous Rage, the damage opportunity is, I mean, there's no question that she is capable to fight this fight. Yeah. But the problem is, once you get that full screen outside of Jealous Rage, it's a tall order to rebuild. So you're trying yeah. to build up as much stock as you can, so you go for the uh, parry window to armor up, build up in your Jealous Rage, mm -hmm. but then you have to go for manual activation at that range. Yeah. Against Axel, that's great. I got Winter Manus right it's here, risky, and then yeah. a side swap, you know, continue. We saw it time and time again. And Baru just continually playing that full screen situation is great. There's a dead Among Us out in the front row got assassinated, bro. Yeah. That, I, I feel like that's how you feel as Abba trying to make your way on in. Mm -hmm. You're looking for these parries to build up meter safely yeah. from the full screen, and all of a sudden you get Winter Mantis, right? Yeah. I think once we were able to actually land the hit in the Jealous Rage after Axel had used his burst, yes. the routing on it was really good to, you know, make sure that we're getting into the key grab, right? You know, sometimes you have to uninstall, go into mm -hmm. key grab so that you have Jealous Rage, and a lot of that meter. Oh, oh my god. No, goodness, not the, among us. Fall guy, fall guy. It's the bean. <laughs> it's the bean. Oh, no. Oh. Production. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, yo, Fall Guys is a great game. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe Transpirosion lost, though. I mean, that's how it goes, right? There can only be one winner. Yeah. Same thing over here in the winner's finals. We got Idom versus Chris G. Yes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, Idom won Marvel. <laughs> and Chris G won Grand Blue. Neither of them are, are satisfied with just one championship here. They're trying to get multiple prize pools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diversify your portfolio. Money moves. I mean, you know, Chris G hanging out with Idom said, yes, yes, you know, keep it hearty and keep having a good time late into the night hours, you know. I'm, I'm definitely going to go home and relax real quick while you have a good time out here in my hometown, Las Vegas. You know, I, don't, I just want you to, you know, have a good time, out here, he says connivingly. So this is New York's Idom versus NY Chris G, who now lives in Las Vegas over here at Level Up Expo. When worlds this is an collide. interesting geographical... Uh, when worlds <laughs> collide. Why is Fall Guy doing the gritty? That's a good question. Why is the Fall Guy hanging out with JJK? He's trying to expand his domain, I guess. They're trying to make sure that this is not, you know, one of the, one of the baddies. Okay? okay, okay. Yeah. Not a bad curse. We don't want curses out here. Yeah, he's cooling out. Nanami's trying to figure this one out. Doesn't want to work overtime. Oh. 
All right. So, winners finals, we're going to be seeing Testament versus Axel, right? Both characters that have some pretty strong zoning capabilities, right? I would imagine Testament wants to play a little bit more towards the mid range, right? Whereas Chris G wants to play a little bit outside of that far slash, right. you know, in Grave Reaper range. Yeah, I think we're going to see kind of the similar situation that we saw in the last game against yeah. ABBA. Uh, I don't could definitely contend to this mid-range. We'll probably see that play in nice 6P. I mean, sitting very close to that jump slash opportunity. Still get the anti here. Teleports in to make sure we don't give any opportunity to Axel. Okay, JD said the Grave Reaper. That's burst out. Able to avoid the Soaring Strike as well. Yep. Right, send it out here. Get that shatter. Adds a little bit more damage here with the Arbiter sign. Yep. Man, Christy was about to build the 50 meter, but it's not going to get you out of the combo. Strong start here with a perfect for Idon. Good round. Let's rock. Let's coming back here. Two eight, put the jump in here from Idon. Again, just closing the gaps here, so Axel has no opportunity to try to contend. You put a lot on the screen, right, to go for the uh, little projectile, the creepy crawly yep. out here, right, to uh, worry about as Idon gets the opportunity to jump in. Staying state is constantly applied. We need to continue that pressure. Even a teleport opportunity there. Red RC, nice. Actually, wait! Oh, whoa! Out nice! The RC as well. Yo, that the H Grave Reaper. That was quite the think ups right there. I'm like, wait, why are you wasting so much meter there? You could, you could use to. Oh, yep. the burst. So we, we're getting a lot off of these jump ins off of the JH, either going into the JD Grave Reaper or going into the Empty Low 2K. Yep. I want to say, I might be mistaken, there is a specific type of counterplay to cover both of those, but I don't want to say because we're pumping out to the live speakers right now. 5k to splat up against the wall. Now that's positive bonus for IDOM. I mean, 50% life lead. Yes, indeed. Oh, jump up. Slash. I got the 5p to push from the corner after 6p. Yep. The meter available. Just go straight to the Soaring Strike. Nice, Ren Sen, get the to hold the corners. Get away from me, please. Stay over there. 5P, interrupt the jump in. Finally, finally to push again. Not quite finding an opportunity to start this offense. This Idom, Chris is peppering the screen. Playing these 5P, almost the goal first blocked. I can't believe 2K was able to recover yeah. in time. I'm not going to lie, we're looking for the anti here, but Idom actually did a uh, jump in just a little bit too far out to find anything. PRC with a cross through. The low arbiter side, caught just standing up. Good round, good round. To go up against the wall, another round for Idom. Nice slash, nice. Full screen scenario again too, so we're gonna have that Rensen opportunity. The jump navigation with Idom is so critical. Yeah, I like that we're being a little bit careful with the IEDs, right? Not constantly committing to the button, knowing that Chris G could just stop with no Rensen follow-up and look for the anti-air here. And right, touch. <laughs> He's got to send it out perfect for a perfect here. Put it on Chris G. Oh, wow. Already counter hit round start here, but not able to get the pick up a little bit too far away. Jump it works for Idom, though. Uh, low off the JH there. Applies the stain state. Still able to keep pressure off of the tap dust. Uh, the 2D pick up a side swap here with that red RC. Nice. Just the back dash here, but we still got the rainfall coming through. Got right, to go for the run up rainwater. Just to make sure we go for the throw bait. Reset the pressure, but Idom is able to escape out of the corner. 100 meter available. Not going to RC the throw, though. Oh, try to hit with that bar slash. Trade out doesn't work out, though. Red RC, no bait on the burst. That's okay, though. Still has 50% tension building up here. Burst right back to make sure we hold the corner. We don't want to lose opportunity, yet we do still. Rents and Geki for the finish. Yeah, I wonder what we caught out there. Maybe trying to get the dash block on wake up there or a jump, yeah, from Idom, but just a little bit too early. One apiece. Jump heavy to start. Nice able to escape the cherry bomb explosion. Still stuck up in here in the corner. Whips the 6 H for the anti air. Maybe tried to bait out the burst there, so didn't go for the full confirm. Able to escape with a 6P. Massive lead right now for uh, Chris G. So Adam gets a couple more interactions here. Does have 50% tension and positive bonus to help. Chris caught whiffing a throw. So it'll be a far slash counter hit. Yep. There we go. Nostrovia just a little bit too far. I actually thought it would confirm, but either way, still picked up off the later hits of the super. Mm -hmm. nice. Goodness. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of mashing on the H Grave Reaper, right? I'm pretty sure Testament is plus there, but still sending out the far slash in case we get a little bit greedy with the plus frames. Ryan, it really hasn't been working out in Christie's favor. 
Oh my goodness, got the jump here, but a little bit too high up for that follow up there. Yes. Needed one more jump here to keep that route going. Jump straight into the straight. Stain proc is a lot of meter build up for Idom. Stuck up against the corners, we get cross up 2k 2d. Oh, nice. Jump heavy. I'm not sure what we were trying to press there. Maybe the 6p attempt, but already smothered by the jump eight. Yeah. Didn't quite pick up the far slash conversion off the stain proc, but it's all good. We still find one more hit. Block, block at the high arbiter. Right back to the corner again, Stain. Oh, a couple of heavy Grave Reapers there. Final touch. Idom up 2 0 right now. Looping the plus range, trying to find an opportunity to escape. He's like, What do I do, dude? I've been mashing. He's like, I'm plus, man. He's <laughs> like, Man, that's crazy. Oh, well. <laughs> Probably trying to find an opportunity to mash on the, uh, yeah. you know, far slash. Maybe looking for a 6P, I would imagine, to leverage some of that upper body invul, but not working out here. 2-1 for Ida. Nice. What a great range on that 6P. It's supposed to jump S start from Chris G there, already owning the corner position. It's Ida. Ooh, didn't get the pushback. Thanks to Burst. Yeah, let's go for ID back J. Uh, what's it called? Jumping Grave Reaper, but tried to go for the air air version. Chris G just running all the way on the ground. Nice, couple jump slashes to make that approach. Life leap for Chris. Royalty low into 2K, dash cancels straight into the YRC. That removes that stain state that gives Chris, you know, a little bit of a safety net here in approaching, or at least in defending right. So you have an opportunity to challenge. Ooh. But the high arbiter sign here into finish. That's a round here for IDOM. You had a hundred meter behind it. The scaling of the high arbiter doesn't matter. Up against the wall with a super. Now it's set point for IDOM. Ooh, jump heavy. Retreat a little bit here. Jockeying for position. Does have Stain out there. Ooh, that's okay. Yep. Sees the run in. The jump up. JH. So 6B from Testament. Gonna catch you right out of the skies. Lots of meter here for Idom. 5K. Ooh. Trying to sneak in a throw, but it works out in Chris's favor since Idom was too far away. Yeah, a little too far away. A little too plus for your own good. Nice pickup off the anti air 5P. Ooh. Be tricky with a fast RC, still 50 meter in the bank. Oh, you are not going to get the gold burst, you cheeky son of a gun. You went for gold, but missed instead. Idom with the super, breaks the wall with Nostrovia, and that's, that's not it. And Chris already took the headset off. I would have thought too. it was over. Oh. Already signed low. But yeah, it was already checked out. Already checked out. That's how it goes. I thought that the scaling was, was going to allow you to kill there, but even with the wall break guaranteed damage, Idom closes it out off of the low. Arbiter sign. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's a fine call there because even still, it, you know, attempting a jump out, you would have tried to catch with the Arbiter sign. You had to yeah. immediately be ready for it. That hard knockdown opportunity was uh, ideal for I Dom uh, to advance into grand finals here, but we still have a bit more to get through before we find out who they'll be going up against, whether it be yep. a run back from Chris G. We're still going to lose their semifinals here up against Baru versus Sun Ace Keem in just a moment. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see the run back of, you know, Chris G and Idom over there in the Grand mm. Finals. But, you know, of course, we have some other competitors, Sun, Ace Keem, and Baru fighting to try and make their way over into the Grand Finals side as well off of this loser's run. So let's see. Yep, I mean, we're going to have that Nagoriyuki coming back, of course. Baru on the Axel. Yep. Yo, we might get an Axel mirror again. It is entirely possible we see that for Losers Finals. But of course, Sun Ace Keem trying to put a stop to that. But if Sun Ace Keem wins this, then it's the Axel Gauntlet, right? Axel and Axel. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I mean, Nagoriyuki is certainly able to close that gap against Baru, right? So you do have the Beyblade to come through. But yep. also, 2H is also a fine tool for. Axel to kind of contend that full screen range against yeah. Nagoriyuki. Round start's the problem, of course, because this is going to be Nagoriyuki's round start every time. There's nothing. It's all, like that's how you have to approach this uh, opening gambit here against Axel. Uh, so you're going to be essentially blocking, hoping for the best. You can try to jump back block if you want to. Yeah. And you get a little bit of pushback after. Uh, but yeah. again, like Sunday's team has been pretty conservative every round start. So it's been checking to see what the opponent does. And then we turn on the aggression here to try to smother the, any uh, hopes one. of victory. Yeah, so I assume we're gonna do a button check here, yes. make sure while this all works. Core tool. I think, uh, I'm curious what Baru is gonna do on this first round start, because a lot of times for Sunday's game, we brought it up in a lot of the sets that they've uh, made it you know, on the stream, that they're playing pretty you know, conservative with the blood on these round starts, either going for counter pokes, or even just jumping in to try and go over some of these pokes from their opponents, so. yeah. Wonder. Wonder what we'll see.
thumbs up, locked in the calm before the storm. And you know, that opening start, I, that, that is the what I'm racking my brain for right now because I'm expecting the traditional <laughs> traditional Goryuki, like you're gonna go off. Like yeah. you are DPing a round start, right? Or you're going for Beyblade, yeah, which yeah. is crazy, the insanity of doing that, but it's the Goryuki. Yo, Baru is smiling. He's like, I do not want to play round start against the Goryuki, bro. Can we just like skip to 80 seconds in, like please? I do not want to have to hold this, but you gotta start somewhere. It's losers semifinals, Yo. Baru versus Sun Ace Keem. Imagine that you round start, take the burst. You just burst round start, <laughs> you got it, bro. nothing <laughs> happened. Here, just take that. It's full screen, bro. Let me push you into the corner real quick. <laughs> Maybe a little too bold for their own good. Let's let the intros rock here. We're coming up on our last few sets over here at Guilty Gear Strive. Top eight. Tension. Let's duel. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't bring my deck. You want to duel me? I'm just a silly little guy. I'm just some dude. I'm just trying to save my sister from blindness so we can uh, get money back for her surgery. We don't have to share the uh, the venue with Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. My bad. No, no tabletop out there. We still play tabletop. Anyways, Winter Mantis already after that first. to see round start first. It was. <laughs> and it, it kind of worked out, right? We didn't take a ton of damage. You know, yeah. we're pretty even on the light. We had a little bit of meter to try and keep Sunny's keep uh, out, but didn't make too much of it. Spending that 50 burst remaining for the white. Wow, that's all. Yeah, it goes for that uh, PRC to try to save ourselves from Winter Man's punish. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yes. right on the end of the windmill, just catching you right on out. Nice. Six H for the shatter. One touch is all that Sun needs. I, you know, I'm surprised the second the DP reached at that range. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, not surprised too. I thought we were out. The round start distance is a little bit closer than wall break distance, right? So I actually thought it wasn't going to reach even on the jump back, but Sun Ace Keen, familiar with the space, and just going to jump right on through into the windmill. It's crazy to me how conservative that Sun Ace Keen is at round start. Like, again, yeah. you just waited for Axe to make a turn. Yeah. You're in a Goryuki. Take this. You could force it, right? But maybe just trying to be uh, very cognizant of the blood game, yeah. right? Are we swinging right on through the single storm? No, we're holding on to the block, but yeah, you need to jump to be able to punish that. Maybe a little bit too late. I think we might have been too close for uh, jump, right? Because you know you were right in the face of like the lift off. Right? I see. Jump over. All right, so the tornado just moves right in front of your face. Opts to take the turn. Says, all right, you're gonna be patient. I am gonna swing. Right. Next round. Here. There it is. Yep. Fukio backwards too to avoid the slash attempt. Nice. Alright, JHD, Axel Bomber, back out to the full screen for you, waiting for this burst to come back up. He's blown, already got that corner position just outside the range of the, uh, ooh, of the sword at this blood level, BSU opportunity. Look at how much damage we've taken, right? Gave up our turn on the air snail, even though we didn't get the full whip punish, Sun Ace Keep has you up against the wall, we're swinging right into the sickle storm. It beats it, it doesn't even clash, it just goes straight on through, and with the Beyblade, Sun Ace Keep takes game number one. My sword is faster than your sickle. I fear not a man who has a million moves. I fear the man who's practiced 5H a million times. <laughs> there we go, sweeping on through with the 2S. Nothing really off the counter. It tries to go for the Fukio. Slash 2, he's going for the back Fukio here. Finally gets the hit with the top dust to boot. That damage, thanks for Gage. I appreciate you for helping me out. The risk was cranked, barely any HP. Straight on through with the JK for the perfect. That's a real act, you know? The, the assist in, in Guilty Gear, risky. Yeah, actually, you know, it, it's the damage multiplier that I feel like is so easy to ignore until you see the damage differential. Yeah. You get off of, you know, not leveraging some of that FD to try and avoid that risk. Watch the blood. Yeah, we're very close to Slash Series. Certainly going to help drain it away a little bit here, but now you don't have to worry about Fukio. I mean, you got it there, hoping for a bite, and here comes the rage. Oh, did you recognize the blood rage, though? Yeah, go ahead. That's, That's why not the greatest confirmed that you could have, but you know, at least the cherry bomb popped you up a little bit. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Beyblade let it rip. Jump heavy will not be able to be stopped. Yep. You let it rip, but it's RIP at one HP and a dream. You had the full blood gauge with barely any health. Oh, you just run up to bait out a match and wake up. Just stopped very early in that slash series, waiting for the first. Baru finally giving it up. Ooh, nice to be. Yeah, the cherry bomb explosion, I'm not sure what we were looking for. We already saw the jump out there from Sunny's key, but maybe just a uh, misinput on the follow up. Right. Over there, jump slash. There's another 5P pickup in the corner. Nice route. Ooh, ooh, 
What are we looking for there? That's the second time we got counter hit on the wake up. I don't know if it's the 5 frame 2k, if we're looking for a late throw attack. Either way, Sun Ace Keem scouting out the wake up and one game away from sending Baru home. Sending Baru home. Sun Ace Keem moving on to try to get into Uzi's finals. And all according to play. Yo, see, the moment we start going for the aggressive round, start, look at this. Yep. You know, first one it was Fukio back into Beyblade. This one going for DP. Clone. But Blood Gauge. Watch it here. One more interaction. If you spend that special, it's over. Ooh, nice. The wall is up to close the gap as opposed to going for Fukio with the uncertain <gasps> hit. Yeah, a little bit too far for the 5k to reach, but the YRC just goes right on through the disjoint on the sword, keeping you safe. Should be able to kill with the wall spot. No, but we live with just a pixel. Okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah, as long as we're hitting that slash series consistently, draining that block is just a little bit. So it allows for that one Fukio. 2k 2d round start for Baru. Very risky, but at the very least, still got the punish off the Fukio. Oops. So I thought through a little delay on the follow up. Here with the Blood Rage, so we can just take to the skies, try to catch out an up back, but Baru stays on the ground. Careful to Yep. Yeah, that was unfortunate, the Blood Rage. So early on, blocks the burst, though. Yeah, not going to be able to kill. You don't have any meter behind it, but now you have hard knockdown off the Wild Assault, waiting for that meter to come back up as well. Oh, what a counter hit, and that will do 3 0 victory over Baru. The full charge from downtown. You beat one Axel, now you got another headed up to the stand. Chris G, take your seat, but again, great work to Baru here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was a good run, but it's some of that fear of dealing with the Goryuki, even yeah. that round start, because, you know, the way the Sunny's team is, had been starting was just very, because even the first game was. Let's wait. Let's see what yeah. you're going to do. And then immediately after, in the next following games, aggression. Yeah. Full aggression. And I wonder if we carry that in against Chris G. It might be that hesitancy we see again of just like, all right, I'm not quite sure how to interact with you because yeah. I don't – I know what you're looking for. I know that you have this storied name, this history across yeah. multiple games. And there's some respect in a name anyways because you often see that mental gap happen where you go, okay, if you're not consistently playing up against like a high-level player mm -hmm. of someone of that caliber – you might psych yourself out a little bit here, so hopefully we got that mental fortitude to go into it and say, hey, you know what? I'm here to play my game. Yeah. I got Nagoro Yuki, you're Axel. What do I have to fear? Yeah. So I am I am curious how Chris is going to play this a little bit different, right? I think what we were seeing from Baru was a lot of committal ways to try and hold down the space, whether it was 2H or Rensen, the windmill to try and catch out the approach or, uh, you know, jumping on through, and also the explosions as well. Yeah. What we didn't see a lot was, you know, some of these low-risk, uh, low-reward ways to try and stuff the approach like 2P or 5P, you know, right. ways to right. just put right. a hitbox right. on the screen that at least recovers in time, right? So yeah. are we going to see more of that from Chris G, or are we just going to, you know, guess more yeah, right on these high committal you? options? I'm, yeah. I'm curious. Yeah, I think uh, Chris is probably going to be, because there was that act of defense that we saw so much from Chris G throughout this series. Uh, so we're probably going to get a little bit more of that 2P yeah. action. Um, you know, because that is that quicker interrupt, but the risk being if there's Beyblade on on the field, that's going to be the problem here for uh, Axel in a lot of ways. You try to pick up with that Winter Manus as well. Yeah. The, it's going to be dependent upon if Sunny's team decides to really spend on that Blood Gauge, which we have started to see lately. So here we go. Losers finals of Guilty Gear Strive. Yep. Two eight round start there. Nice jump ass. Hit. Yeah, they'll put quite a bit of blood. Caught out of the skies here. Blocks the burst, but yeah, a little bit too far. Awkward confirmed. Yeah. Got the goal burst though. Nice jumping with the tank. Good pick up off the RC. Brings us all the way over to the other side. And still 50 meter available for Chris G. Good jump install there to get out of that corner. Tap dust. No resources here except for trying to strip away on that blood gauge. Just look at the kill on 6H, my goodness. You know, I'm not going to lie. I thought we would live with the pixel after the wall break, but Axel not one of the tankier characters in the cast. We're just going to send it with the far slash. Wall is to push to the corner. Good spot to be for Chris G. Nice, I like the anti-air 5D. Using a couple more of these low committal options to catch you right on out. Gets all the corner carry you need off of it, especially with the RC. Okay, stand up for me real quick. Jumping out, just needs one touch, one significant touch from uh, Chris G to close it out. Yep. There's a range. That's certainly going to help out. Yeah, even pushed back up against the wall. You had all the range you needed to get the punish. Really not a lot of help left for Sunday's team. Yukio back, Beyblade to catch on a late back down. Swift throw. First right away. 
Extra close slash here he is. Still trying to rebuild on that blood cage because you don't want to get caught in another rage scenario where Chris just finishes it out. Yep. Let's keep the slash series going so we rebuild. Rebuild build up the 50 meter for Chris G. I wonder if we're gonna spend it for the side swap. No, 100 meter available. Maybe looking for a time slot conversion. Swept on through with the 2S. Nice. Oh my goodness. It went over. John, nice block and the explosion. And Roger Rover with the rents and caught out with the rainwater though. 50 meter to your name. Side swap. Gotta get the wall splat here, but it's not enough. Just jump back slash. Full screen scenario. One touch is all that Chris needs. The moment you stand up, it's gonna be a send. Rensen for the finish. Chris G taking the first game. They're both laughing about it at the end of the game scramble. They're like, all right, all right. It was kind of checkmate at that point. There's nothing that really Nagoriki could have done to avoid that stereo um, in, in that particular moment. Like, if you try to go Beyblade, we interrupt Rensen. If you try to jump, I got an anti to push you right back out. There we go. Counter hit straight up into the super. Recover a lot of blood here. Shatter. And touch. The block on clone. The patience allowing for this 2K TD. Nice. Oh no, you tried to 2H, yet Axel's 2H is certainly going to reach here. Oh yeah. Now you got that back throw, corner position. Chris trying to return the favor. PRC to keep it going, but the throw! PRC forward, tried to bait out something, but waited a little bit too long. Put yourself right in back throw range. Sunny's keep takes the round. Inspired by the throw, let's just do it again. Triple 5P? Yeah, yeah, why not? Could open up. I'm not trying to spend because you're already at this point in Blood Rage. You're going for heavy jump ins, which is so risky against Axel. You need a way to drain the blood. We find it here with 2S with the Fukios. You better get this finish. There, there we go. We go. To the super just barely about to pop. But stopping in the nick of time. Still going to live with a pixel. Thank goodness. Like, literally. <laughs> Oh, you had BRC. I think you're looking for the throw there, but we're seeing the counter on the screen. Maybe put in the throw a little bit too early off of the BRC slowdown. Yeah. That's all I can imagine happened. Dual one. Let's rock. Going this game three. Slashers so here just to maintain that blood usage. Trying to take some of it away. White Wild Assault here to continue. That risk is looking for a single strike. Chris might be able to buy enough time for that to dwindle now that we're at the full screen because now with the blood gauge so high up for Sun, one special will turn you into a rage. Steep. 50 meter available, but really not a lot of health. Throw RC is all you need up against the wall, but even the snail wall break isn't enough. Ooh. Yeah, you're, you're fine with just swinging at the route start there. You're like, all right, I have enough health. Yes, you have RC to cash out on whatever hit you get, but trying to get this last trade. Ooh. 6 me round start for the corner. DP. Yeah. Gonna build up so much of this blood gauge again. Like that's been, I've been keeping my eye locked in on that because now, oh, never mind. BSU. There you go, 6H just, I wonder if we could have routed into the wildest off with the hard knockdown there, but I think playing for that third round, right? Making sure yeah, you're healthy yeah, on the first exactly. gauge. I'd rather hold on to it there just to at least get the shatter. Yep. I have so much health to deal with. I'm not going to go into Rage. I hope you don't spend to go into Rage. This super does work out here perfectly for Sunday's game. Round a piece in this game three. Oh, nice. I like to use the 2P there, but believed in the combo just a little bit too much. Even though you didn't get fully punished for it, at least, you know, you have your back up against the wall and Sunday's game is able to mount their Ooh. offense. Guess for Slash Series into White Wild Assault there. Another one. Another one. RC. Stomp the toes of the 6K. Really not a lot of blood to work with here, so you're trying to back out to the optimal 2S 5H range, but while you are, Chris G runs it with the JH. We're trying to go for the 6B startup there, and we're already on top of it. Chris G trying to close this one out. Red RC with a hunt with 50% meter left over for the full extension. Oh, PRC to the buy up, yeah. Watch out. Nice jump back. So careful, no burst available here for Sun. But 50% tension. I hope you're blocking, Chris, because this swing will hurt. Right, straight on through the counter hit. You got hit before that, too. The lad who lived. Oh, no, Chris. No, but it's on the gold burst. Yep, you're looking for the chip damage, but still caught out by the Beyblade. But his team takes another game. I can't believe it. Like, that super came through.
we got hit with the initial uh, strike before we spent for super because uh, actually was already like twirling backwards. So. Yeah. All right. So I'm up with the DP. Now I'm trying to go for the extra spend on DP two when you have the hard knockdown. Going to get that positive bonus so we can get YRC opportunity. At the very least, bring you bullying in the corner. Going to make it difficult here for Sun. We're trying to swipe Oof. on through, get this blood down. Cross off series. Yeah, shot the six H. Are you kidding me? That blood is no concern. We're trying to kill you. It's set point for Sun Ace Keen. Oh, nice jump out, BSU. Jump back heavy. Nice drop the two S. The two far away. Nice two H. Renton pick up from two K G D. Low. Surprise, no side swap here to go for the rest of the screen. Now we're at the opposite end, though. Yeah. 50 meter available. Tries to air stall with the JD. Easy 5K, but huh. I think you can 5K, 5P. It wouldn't be a significant amount of damage. Yeah. Probably for something bigger, though. Ooh. All right, swept up with the Axel Bomber. Chris G looking to try and tie it up, but it's still set point for Sunday's keep. Nice jump heavy on the approach. Yeah, I wonder what we were looking for there. Maybe a little bit late on the 6B. Nice. 6 age, about even on health here. Trades, though. No, didn't commit the... We were pretty low, so might have been able to get one more, but the recovery would have ended. Red RC. Yep, off the wild assault, spent 50 meter, 50 burst, just to get counter hit by the far slash. I mean, this is... Point here for Sun, Oof. and the rage is there. That's the opportunity you want to rage. That's like an okay blood rage. You already got the opponent in the combo. Great back throw. Sun Ace Keem advancing to grand finals over Chris G. Tried to go for the walk up on the blood rage, but we were one back throw ahead. Chris G out at number three, but still great work on the yes. performance. Absolutely. Sun Ace Keem really fought tooth and nail for every inch in that match. I mean, of course, it's a difficult space to navigate against Axel. But it is one of those scenarios where it's just whittling away at Nagoryuki's health. Be yeah. Meanwhile, Nagoryuki just needs that one big hit, especially with the corner position that we got Chris G in time and time again to build up that risk gauge. Yes. And after that victory, it is Sunday Keem's opportunity for a run back against Idom, where Idom took it 3 2 over Sunday Keem. But before we get to that, we're going to take a quick break here and come back with more Guilty Gear Strive. Grand finals time. Don't go away. See you in a sec. This is. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry, we were busy enjoying our Electrolit, having a good time. You know, refreshing for these grand finals. We got Chris G versus Sun Ace Keem, this run back over from the winner's side. So I'm excited to see it. I think our players are just going to button check real quick to make sure everything is all good. Fighting for this lion's share of that $2,000 prize pool. $2,000 prize pool, and that's not all the prize pools we're seeing this weekend here. Of course, the $10,000 in the pot for Street Fighter VI is still out there and lingering. And you know, we've also had the $5,000 pot bonus for MK1 happening later today. But yes, Grand Finals is here. Idom versus Sun Ace Keem. Yep. A run back, 3-2 victory here for Idom on the winner's side. We'll see how this shakes up because honestly, they were close rounds. You know, Nagoryuki again, as Sun Ace Keem started off aggressive against yes. Idom, it seemed to fare better throughout the set. But are we gonna go back to that conservative Nagoryuki? Because that seems to be the way that Sunday's game kind of starts things off and then yeah. slowly builds up. And I think over in the last set against Chris G, we just went full aggression to kick it off here. We'll see if Sunday's keeps that momentum. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I see some support in chat for both of these players. So who has got Sun Ace Keem taking it in grand finals? Yes. All right, and we got some IDOM fans as well. Let's see a game number one of grand finals here for Guilty Gear Strive. 2K, yes, I mean the aggressive start. That's kind of what we were looking for here. And it is got the corner, expecting burst while walking back off that close slash. And again, Red RC. Sunday's team is really fishing for this burst that's never coming because this blood rage is certainly going to seal the deal here for IDOM. It's certainly a bad look right now. Yeah, I think this is kind of an uncharacteristic blood pop, right? We've been so good about the blood management in the previous sets with the back throw. Two close slashes, but still we call it a frame kill. Bates out the super. Not able to land in time. Yeah, Testament reversal super is pretty slow. Two pops in one round. But that was, again, you already had the opponent in combo, so that's a good one. Mask off. And on. Double Bay of Blade Burt. We're having a good time over here on the sticks. <laughs> we're, we're having fun. We got specials, and we are going to use them. Sunday's Keen takes round number one. 
Jesus, the follow-up. Oh, no, a little bit too far with the Fukio, so we make do with what we got. Going for that Slash series. Ooh, nice, 2H. Oh, back dash, all right. That was a big opportunity, whiffing on the BSU. And again, yep. just because we got the lift, that's A-OK, -okay, though. We're going in that rage in optimal opportunities. Here we go. Game number one. This is a uh, this is a much wilder Sun Ace team that I think we've seen this entire top eight, right? A lot of times trying to play to the spacings. Oh, oh, oh. All right, this is this is more like what we've seen, right? Not being too aggressive off of the round start, trying to leverage some of these buttons and save some of that blood. But now we're already at level two, spending the 50 for the wild assault. That's close on the OTG. Get you to stand up at 2K. A couple interrupts there from Inox. Fly state, nice, 6P. 6P right to the gut. Fly the stain state, pick up all the way over to the corner with the OTG. All right, nice, another one here, locked in. Are you pressing oh, I see the 2K. Indeed we did, swept up with the Shizuri Yuki, 100 meter for Idom, but rapidly losing health off this, and also got so much blood back for Sunday's game. Yes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Pumped up with the EXE Beast, you had 50 meter behind it, even if you could take your turn. You can't even be mad. That looks sick. Yep. <laughs> Straight on through the slow mo, soaring through the skies here, round on the board for Idom. Back in the precarious position because you look at the range of Gun Sword. Couple slashes, two S. Now jumping in on me, 5P. All right, back dash on the bite. Still had PRC behind it. Sunday Scheme able to get the wall break, one touch. Return the favor here. All right, round a piece, but look at the resource lead for Idom right now. Yeah. You had so much blood to work with, and you only needed that one hit. So sending it with the Beyblade is perfectly fine. Sending it with the DP gets the burst off from Idom and Beyblade from downtown as you up against the wall. Double Dolby Atmos counter hits here. 2K 2D pickup. That's the great Reaper. Another one. Yeah, speaking of the base drops, right? We're going JH into the empty low. Instead, now we're going JH into the throw. JD on the dome. We're just rotating all the options. 50 meter for Idom to close it out. Well done. I mean, not letting, again, that was the resource lead, right? Yeah. Because we spent that burst in such a weird time in that last round. Going into it, full stock for Idom. Great spend because it was round start. I got hit and still able to keep your cool after the initial counter hit. Round start, though, is Idom. That's crazy because it is, again, I keep telling you, James. Yep. It's, it's the Koryuki's turn. <laughs> Uh, what's what's the meme? Like, oh, round start is the Goryuki Oki situation, right? Yeah. Oh, but we're trying to reset back out to the full screen here. Idom uses the burst. Has the same state applied. Don't be greedy nice. about the teleport. I like the delay off of the jump back as well to throw off the timing on Sunday's game. You know you're looking for that TP. All right, what do we got? We do have tension available. Oh. All right, tempo change. Back going up into the corner. RC didn't break the wall just yet. The finish, though. <laughs> From the heavens above, like took all the time in the world to fall down with that jump K. Yep. Two K two D. Send out the succubus right behind. Pick up all the way to the corner. They wall splat too. Okay. Send life to the shield. Yep. But what's interesting is you didn't have the meter to support it this time around. Yeah. Right. So you're firing off these Beyblades with Ooh. no meter, and when you do have meter, you just don't do it. Yeah, you let it rock. You let that JD rock to catch out the BRC. 50 meter down, but Idom, as you read at this awkward mid range with the stain state available, you're scared of Arbors, you're scared of Far Slash. So many things that could kill you off of one last touch. Oh, good guard cancel. Yes. 100 meter. Really doesn't have to play too risky here to try and close out this game. Just keep zoning out. You know that the Fukio is going to be a problem because look at the blood gauge. You could play at that zone without any worries, not a care in the world. Just keep throwing out those Arbiter signs because you will be putting yourself in a detriment because the bet has to be you run Fukio into BSU. Yeah. And Idon's full screen able to react much more efficiently at that full screen scenario, a little bit easier. Exactly. Alrighty, game number four here. Idon just needs one more to seal it out for the whole tournament immediately. Second like the first rock here. Go. Another one. First. On the other side. Deck, same corner position. Keep pressuring because you have stand to continue. Sucky by, keep going. Not even confirmed just to hold the pressure. Nice block. Go. Still caught out after the stain proc. He's going to reapply it with the crow. Oh, got caught trying to backdash. Slash series picks it up. Nice. With the overhead off DP. Go. 
though. Not going to end the Slash series. So we're opting for the hard knockdown instead of the blood refresh. Ooh, nice drift. And a jump. The slow start on 2S because of the blue RC. Ooh, RC off the air hit. Not quite as oh. many plus frames. Just jumps right on over the air grab. I don't want to close that. I don't want to take the lead. Staying applied. A back dash. Waiting Ooh. for the rage. The punish. Sun Ace bet it all to close it out for the final hit. And that is the risk that you take in a scenario like that. Not paying off. I know we're in Vegas, but gambling like that is a little bit too much. Sometimes you got to go for it. Speaking of the gamble, right? We got this high low off of the JH. Haven't seen the counterplay just yet. Back up against the wall. We break it through for the positive bonus. About to build the 50 item. Playing it slow. Waiting for this verse nice. to come back up. Very good wild assault here to close the gap. Avoid the Grave Reaper. Oh my goodness. We got the counter hit. Try to get the side swap. We do succeed. And it's just enough off of the Arbor sign. Pick up the full combo for Idom to take it 3-1 in Grand Finals. Your champion of Guilty Gear Strive at Level Up Expo. Honestly, I did not think that was going to kill. I thought we had one more interaction. Yep. A great play here by Idom and a great showing from everybody within the top eight. I mean, crowd, did you enjoy this Guilty Gear Strive? Let me hear it. Yeah, I hear it. I there hear it. Go. I hear y'all. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And honestly, this top eight was spectacular to see yeah. two great players out here and the rest, of course, being also just as great making it out here because that is the Titans that you're looking for, right, yes. D? All right, Idom and Chris Gere in this bracket. Yeah. Let's see how we do toe-to-toe -to -toe against these Titans to show that we can defend this turf out here. Yep. And certainly they showed up and showed out. Sunday's team put on a great return to make it to this grand finals position. And my goodness, like... It is that aggression, the gamble state that we saw because it's so interesting to see that we were so conservative on meter. Yep. I think that kind of cost a little bit of, uh, you gave up the, the the offensive pressure that Nagoriki already commands at round start so yep. often and allowing for Idom to close those gaps anyway. So well, I would have loved to have seen more aggression at round start like we did in that first game. Yeah. So now that the bracket is over, mm -hmm. I can say this because we saw this so much from Idom. If I'm not mistaken, the IAD, so we saw a lot of IDJH. And then for the high option, we do JD into Grave Reaper, right? For the low option, we just do land into 2K. I don't want to spread misinfo on the mic, and I also didn't want to say it to get in the players' heads, but I think if you just take the hit on JH, it does not combo into the 2K or the JD, into the high or the low option. So you might be able to 5P or 6P after. I might be misremembering, so chat can correct me on that one, but... You know, we were getting so much mileage off of a lot of these jump ins on the hard knockdowns as well. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe something to consider, but Idom still going to be walking away with the uh, lion's share of the 2K press pool. What's the, uh, do you know offhand the hit stun on that? Oh, not off the top of my head. I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's like dependent. a level three. Yeah, because I think it's yeah. like a height dependent thing if you go for the JH. I see, I see. Because, yeah, you, if, if you're like just at head height, you yeah. should be able to, and it just depends upon Testament's uh, hit stun on that. I see, I see. So you should be able to hit. Then go into 2K and continue right after. Makes sense. Because um, that's a lot of the case with, like, uh, Soul can do that, right? Like, uh, But, it, again, height dependent, though. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. But, yeah, $2,000 pop bonus here. We're going to get our top three pulled up onto the stage to show off and show out. I mean, mm -hmm. it is well earned. Uh, you know, great work uh, across the board. And thank you so much for everyone tuning in for this Good Thing Drive. Right after it will be MK1 with that $5,000 pop bonus yeah. here. We do have Tong up on the stage. It might be time here to kind of show it up and show out here. Uh, let's see. Do I got the thumbs up, Ricky? Are we good? Oh, we're good. Oh, we're not good. <laughs> I All think. right, send it. We got our top three ready. All right, congratulations to the top three for Guilty Gear Strive. Coming in at third, Chris G. In second place, your runner-up, Sun Ace Keem. And your level up 2024 champion for Guilty Gear Strive, Idom. Congratulations, thanks to all the players, and uh, we'll see you next year for level up. All right, everybody, thank you so very much for hanging out with us once again on this Guilty Gear Strive. That will do for Guilty Gear, but it's not over here at Level Up. Like I said, next up, we have Mortal Kombat 1 with plenty more top eight actions. Some great yep. killers out here hanging out with us in that top eight. So, J2, thank you so very much for hanging out with me. It's been a oh, real yeah. pleasure. And we'll see you in just a moment with more Level Up action.